What's the temperature? I don't know. What is it? Five, six, seven, sixteen, uh, thirteen? I think it's about seven degrees above zero. And we are coming to you from our snowy uh, but plowed out campsite at Tequamanon Falls State Park in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. It's really nice, I mean, to have the place all to yourself, basically. Yeah, we're recording this actually on a Friday, and our, uh, our campers, there's going to be a bunch of them coming in from really all over the place. Tequamanon Falls is spectacular. There's two sets of falls. There's the upper and the lower. The upper is the big one. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the one uh, that's the postcard everybody has seen from uh, Upper Peninsula of Michigan. We just went there on a Friday and I was the only person on the platform and Bo was the only <laughs> dog on the platform. And the falls in the winter are beautiful. They never freeze. People think they freeze up. You know, uh, while we're there, people always say, well, how do you stay warm? Well, you know, uh, it is cold, so you can't stay out there all day. But uh, wear hats. Um, layers, lots layers. of layers, I've boots. I've got a sweatshirt on, you know, our merch sweatshirt. <laughs> I got my sweatshirt. Uh, I wear a pair of lined, uh, these are our lined uh, Eddie Bauer fleece lined um, outdoor pants. And you've got sweatshirts, also outdoor pants, and boots. Right. It's uh, go to a ski shop, go to a hiking shop, REI, someplace like that, and see what's the latest and the best for keeping you warm. He says it's much too warm in here, Mom uh -huh. and Dad. Can't we just stay outside? And do we really have to go south? This is such a wonderful place. Yep. And he doesn't want to. Even though we're going to Tampa in a couple of days, he he wants to stay here in the snow. All right, out in the snow, and let's get some winter camping tips. I'm Leanne Sterling, and I'm Rick Corral. And you guys have been doing this now. Year uh, this year is my this, right? sixth year and her my fourth. My fourth year. Okay. So, so uh, I guess one, that calls for two tips. <laughs> yeah, we have two, we have two tips here. Yeah. Well, one one thing new for me this year was to bring a gray water jar to set on my kitchen counter to collect those odd bits of gray water. And like, um, well, we got to spell it out a little bit yeah. for people. Well, well, you know, when you're rinsing out your coffee cup, yeah, um, stuff like that, or your soup yeah. bowl, and yeah. just have a place to collect yeah. that water because we're not using any water in our sink, obviously, or anywhere else on the road trek. The other thing that we always bring are is shovels, snow shovels, and also metal shovels because of the ice pack and, and uh, the heavy hard snow. So Digging out the uh, uh, fire pits and the, and all of the picnic tables, it comes in real handy. You always use the shovel. So I consider your tips extra good because you are people from the Upper Peninsula. So you are used to dealing with <laughs> yeah, snow. Dealing with ice snow. And you've been here for years. <laughs> yeah, so right. you are like natives up here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you can give us Dre lots of good dress tips. Dress warm. <laughs> dress warm. Layers. There's no such dress. thing as bad weather. What is, how does it go? No such thing as bad weather, only bad clothes. Yeah. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Very true. We have fun. That's what it's all about. All year round. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Patty Bonham. And I'm Steve Bonham. And uh, your winter camping tip is what? <laughs> um, well, one thing we've learned is to carry. So we, we, in order to be able to use our bathroom in the van, we carry a, well, in all of our water, we carry like a bucket that we use to wash our dishes and put the, um, gray, water. the gray water in. Um, and so then, and then of course we use the black tank using uh, antifreeze. antifreeze, you can talk to them. Yeah, <laughs> so we pretty much between um, having dishwater dumped in a bucket, being able to use our black tank, we keep electric tea kettle by the sink for hot running water. Uh, as long as our heat's working, we're not really roughing it. Yeah. And just enjoying it outside? What's your tips for that? Uh, just get outside and enjoy it. When you look outside and it's cold and snowy, don't go back in. Just put on your layers and go out. And if you're outdoors people who like to travel because you like it quiet and you like beautiful skies, uh, you can't beat winter camping for quiet and beautiful skies. And I noticed you're staying very close to the fire, too. Yes. <laughs> We like winter camping because as long as we stay warm. So. Yeah, well, we wear, and I wear several layers. I find that we, I was snowshoeing a little while ago, and then I don't need the fire because I'm out active and I'm warm enough, but when I'm just standing still, the fire is nice. Yeah. 
Well, it's actually pretty warm now. It's probably up near 15 or so, so it's a good 20 degrees balmier than it was last night, so this is no problem at all. Hi, I'm Dave Steinetter from Lincoln, Nebraska. You yes. came all the way to the Upper Peninsula from, the, uh, from Nebraska. Right. Um, how about a tip, your number one tip for winter camping? Uh, test everything before you take off. Now, what T do you mean? Well, uh, make sure everything in, works when it's cold in your RV. And also, like we just discovered that our, our coffee maker uh, will not work. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Fortunately, we have a spare, so, but... Uh, that, that could be very, a real crisis. Yes, yes, for us it would be, but... Um, but, you know, it does, uh, winter camping does put a little more stress. What, yes. others, what things in particular should people pay attention to? Um, uh, batteries is, is, of course, one thing. Um, uh, your propane, furnace, all that, all that, because if you get out in somewhere where it's 10 below, like it was the other night for us, and... That furnace doesn't work, and you don't have plug-ins to for any alternative heat. You get cold, but <laughs> fortunately, ours everything worked, so yeah. we're in good shape. Unfortunately, the great coffee crisis is mitigated by having two. Yes, two. two. <laughs> as a backup. <laughs> That's right. Well, welcome to the woods, Dave. Thank you. I'm Janet Matthews. And your winter camping tip? My winter camping tip is get Reflectix and put it in all of your windows to keep the toasty warm inside your rig. And Reflectix is, is kind of like this it's, it's, bubble insulation wrap, right? Yeah, it's a luminized sort of bubble wrap stuff that you can get at any big box store. Um, I think I got mine at Home Depot, uh, but I've seen it in a lot of other stores. And, and you and cut it to the size cut, of the window? You can cut it to the size of the window. Some people have gotten really fancy and and stitched along this and made hems along the side. I didn't, I just cut mine and stuck it in the window and there it sits. And it keeps it warmer? Keep It's insulating and it keeps the heat inside. Yeah. In the summertime though, it keeps the cool inside too. So it's the same kind of material basically that you find in those uh, windshield uh, covers that yeah. the sun yeah. shield things, I don't know what you call them. But they're, they're great for insulating. And get yourself a nice, toasty sleeping bag and you're in heaven. And a really cool A fuzzy hat. hat. Fuzzy hat. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Janet Matthews. You're, you're welcome, Mike Wendland. Hi, I'm Jerry Smith. I'm from Holly, Michigan. And uh, I do this uh, once a month through the winter. And we should point out, he is tent camping. Yeah. Tent camping. <laughs> and you do this once a month in the winter. That's correct. What's the coldest you've ever camped? Ten below. Ten below. Without without electric heat. How did you stay warm? Well, again, the uh, the, the twenty below bag does the trick. Plus, I have a Coleman, little Coleman stove that I used for heat, and uh, it stands up. I do real good in the winter time with that. And then at night, when I go to bed, I turn everything off, get in my sleeping bag, and that's it. What do you like about winter camping? But just look around you right now. The trees are covered with snow. It's uh, new fallen snow from last night. It's real pretty. And you meet nice people. <laughs> <laughs> and if your feet get cold, I'll boil water, put it in a water bottle, and, uh, and then put it in my sleeping bag, and it's nice and toasty. Now, you know there's a whole lot of RVers, Jerry, down in Florida that are watching us right now, and they think you're crazy. <laughs> Well, that's okay. <laughs> uh, Bo is very interested in your tent. He thinks he needs one of those. So Yeah, we were talking uh, this morning when <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, Bo he, came over. That's right. Bo, uh, Bo actually heard, heard Jerry in the tent <laughs> and came over. And he didn't know what that was and started to bark. So <laughs> That's yeah, true. That's well, welcome aboard. Uh, if you're still here tonight, there will be a fire tonight. You come and join us. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hi, I'm Lynn Ellen Kaiser from Canton, Michigan. Lynn Ellen, you do some awesome photography. Uh, you got up at dawn yesterday. You shot yeah. this awesome sequence. But when it's really cold, phones don't work. So maybe you could give yeah. us all a tip about photography in the cold. Photography in the cold. Yeah, and I'm, I'm using an iPhone and uh, 13 Pro. And sometimes you just don't want to have your back battery back up. It, and it's not going to last anyway. So yesterday, I took my iPhone. I took toe warmers. That have the adhesive on them and I stuck it to the back of my phone 
Then I took two face masks and I wrapped it around so you could have this much coming out of the foam. <laughs> yeah. Put it on my tripod and I went and explored the beach while my phone took a time lapse out at Whitefish Point at sunrise at minus so many degrees. And it lasted a good half an hour that That's way. That's amazing. So, uh, and can I share your picture with everybody so they can sure, see how good you did? Sure, be happy to. And, uh, uh, that is a great dip because it is cold. In, it's very in... cold. The bigger problem is um, is your hands freezing, I think, than, than over your phone. And capacitive touch gloves inside flip open mittens. Oh, that's right. So your fingers so, will work. Yeah. yeah. And then so I always have my right hand inside. I have capacitive touch gloves inside my flip open. And if it doesn't work, then it's the highly technical lick it. <laughs> and then it, then it works. And I have... Uh, toe warmers inside also because those stick and then I have hand warmers in here because those will fall out so hand warmers toe warmers and stick them on your phone and it does a good job yeah. hi I'm Steve from Heartland Michigan uh, I was asked to give a winter tip about winter camping and Wait, let me I just read, tell everybody pay attention to what he says this is the best one yet <laughs> I read a long time ago that the most important thing you can do for yourself when you're camping in the cold is to eat. Eat yes. before you go to bed, eat five times a day. <laughs> Food is calories. Calorie is a unit of heat. So, or a unit of energy. So the more you eat, the warmer you'll stay. They advertise that you can tow it with a half ton. I'd probably do a three quarter ton. Welcome to the big show, the RV show! You know, I was actually surprised how neat that was. It's beautiful, the interior, I loved it. It's very comfortable, very affordable, and it's a thumbs up. After two years of COVID-caused uncertainties, the annual RV Super Show in Tampa roared back to life this year with bursting at the seams attendance. There were lots of RVs and lots of optimism under the crystal clear Florida blue skies. That's the uh, Unity rear twin bed and uh, I like it, what more can I say? Lots of storage inside, comfortable beds, lots of space in the kitchen. I like it. Come on in with me. Let me start by showing you the back. This is the rear twin because it has two twin beds here. And these are really nice, comfortable mattresses. See this all the way around? Storage, storage, storage everywhere. And uh, right next to the bed, you know, you've got your controls, uh, some plugs, the bathroom porcelain toilet lots of storage see all the storage inside for that there's even little cubby holes over here and we love this part see the pantry lots of storage in that pantry and then very comfortable chairs you like those yes i do i'm just sitting here chilling yeah so this is on the uh, sprinter cutaway chassis there's the front of it there's that great dashboard. There's all of the cool stuff. We just love this uh, Sprinter dashboard. This is actually just like an iPad. <laughs> you can control it all that way. Nice kitchen, big refrigerator. Um, opens both ways. See that? Look at that. Microwave and the convection oven. Pass through storage, that's great. And the little table in there too for the outdoor table. Yeah, that table, we have that on our Wonder. And, and we that love it. attaches right there and you have a have like your own picnic table. Boy, that's a lot of room under there. That is a lot of room in there. This is the Winnebago Vista. It's 28 feet, five inches long. So it's not really that bigger uh, than many Class C's out there, a couple feet. Uh, but I want to show you the, the amount of room that you have in a small Class A. This is a gas engine, it's not diesel, but uh, let's go take a look. The first thing I notice as I walk in are these very comfortable theater seats. The storage in between, a place for your cup so you don't spill it, but those seats are comfortable and they've got seat belts. Nice big table, you can drop it down 
to uh, make sleeping here. More seat belts. You got seat belts. Big screen TV. Double sink. Lots of counter space. Three burners. Microwave up above. A real oven. I think I could uh, make a Thanksgiving dinner in there, Michael. Let me show you the sleeping area of the bed. We've got a king size bed. You can get out on both sides. Got a nice window there so you can look, scenic area. You can sleep with the shade up and enjoy the view. A big shower, sink, storage, the toilet. Oh, and there's even a heat duct in the bathroom. That's a good thing to have. You don't uh, realize how much you need that until you don't have it. You can actually pull this baby out. And you have a nice stand up desk, work table. We all sit way too much. This is so nice. And then when you get done, just put it right down and you're set to go there. We've always liked the Tiffin brand RV and we're in their Class C 2022 Wayfarer and there's a lot to like in this. Lots of storage. I like the handles. The hardware is nice. We have a queen size Murphy bed. In the back is the bathroom and you'll notice that window. When you're driving, you're going to be able <laughs> to look out no way that you're, not window. you're not gonna be able to look out I'm from gonna that bet you have 50 bucks I came in the driver's seat to see if the, you can see out the rear view mirror into that rear window well you can't now maybe you could but there is no rear view mirror so you, you sure can't it's see not hiding and it's not there there's no rear view mirror hmm. there's a place to hold your glasses but no rear view mirror so you really can't see and even if you could it would be just this little thing so I won that bet you won did y'all hear that? I won? Wow. <laughs> you were right. How about that? Well, I was right? <laughs> I've never heard my wife say that. So look at all the stories in here. These all pull out. <laughs> so you can get at everything in there. Aren't those nice? That really is. All right. Inside. Wow. So this is the 40 foot long one. There we go. This is uh, where you're going to serve the fajitas, Jennifer. <laughs> fajitas, okay, here? Yeah. So this is a slide out here. This partially fills up, but then you just would pull that out and it would lay flat. But you could also leave it like so to kind of bike, like lounge and watch television right there. Here's the bathroom. Oh my gosh, is this roomy? <laughs> There's the shower. Big bathroom back there. Double sinks. As of right now, yes, Double sinks, very nice. Whirlpool. Stacked washer and dryer. That's wow. not, that is a closet. <laughs> I'll sit, look at that. Yeah, you got room. Lots of huge. I'll have to go buy some more clothes. You see uh, what they've done with the bed here? It's uh, on the slide. Well, it's on the slide, but it, it's also set up so you can use it as like a lounge. You can do this and just watch TV. Ah. A lounge. You are lounging. Can you do the rest of the shooting today? And I'm just going to hang here and notice that there's a ceiling fan, fan. Ceiling fan. Very good idea. And for those of you who like to watch TV in bed, Ta -da. that's a big TV. I asked uh, the Winnebago rep what it sells for and he says he can't tell me that you got to go talk to a salesman. So if they're not posting it and uh, they won't tell you, it's out of our price range. <laughs> Let's talk truck campers. Northern Light. This is uh, about as uh, uh, four season as you can get in a truck camper. If you want to get out there in really cold weather and have your plumbing work and everything, that's why you want to look at this one. Plus, it's got some pretty high-end features inside. Let's take a look. Nice shower. Right off the bat, look at how nice the shower is in a truck camper. Lots of storage, plenty of storage. That's a great size queen. You know, again, it's a truck camper. So if you're sleeping there, but it looks like a very comfortable bed. Thick, 
thick uh, mattress. There is a dinette, permanent dinette in this thing. Very nice, very nice. Price on this uh, truck camper is uh, $76,100. And uh, you need a uh, one ton truck and an uh, eight foot uh, bed on that truck to, uh, to haul it around. They've got a runner in here. All you do is get some carpet and you put an edge on it and it matches the carpet that they have like under the kitchen table. But you could replace this carpet easily and it's nice and warm under your feet. I think this is a great idea for keep your feet warm, keep everything clean. Good idea. A moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie. That's, That's amore. Do that, do that again. How big is this? It looks pretty compact. It, it, it is extremely compact. So just to give you a comparison, this is only 10 inches longer than a Honda Odyssey minivan. Or it is 17 feet 9 inches long and a standard parking space in the U.S. is 19 feet. So it is uh, only 15 inches shorter or 15 inches shorter than a standard parking space. So you can navigate through traffic, park easily, or as I like to say, fit in your driveway beautifully. What Wingham does is they take a chassis and then they take this custom fiberglass shell and they attach the shell to the chassis and that opens up to an, a, a tremendous amount of innovation. And for starters, it's by putting the bed in the ceiling. So by having the bed in the ceiling and not on the floor, it opens up all your floor plan space to have a much larger kitchen, a much larger ba bathroom and a dining room that seats six. Should we take a look? Let's take a look. Alright, let's take a look. This has this very elegant and sophisticated formal front entry door that opens and you walk right in. Wow. <laughs> How big is this again? This is 15 feet? This is, this is 17 feet 9 inches long. So it is the smallest Class B motor home in the world to have a full bathroom. Let's see this bathroom. You have a full vanity and sink, medicine cabinet and a standing shower. Inside this micro RV is a dining room that comfortably seats six people. Two up front. So you have two here, four there. You want know, to see something that's really cool is take the table, turn around, and I've get got your laptop office. up, and the TV that goes right there, watch TV, work from your laptop. Wow. Smart. And this comes back around. And so I will show you the second bed. There's a cushion that goes on top of this. And then these cushions all come off. And okay. this comfortably sleeps two children or one of them. Are you ready for ceiling. are you ready for this bed? The drop down, the Wingham famous drop down bed. Oh okay. voila. Look at that. And then you have a little step ladder. Two people sleep two here. Two adults. Two can sleep there. Yep. Wow, how easy is it to put back up? Let's take a look. How'd that look for easy? Oh my goodness, and look at all the stories. Yep. Love the catches. Very nice hardware. Why can't we do this in America? We're look here now, we're in America. Look at this. Well, that's my big question <laughs> to you. Uh, yes. How do you get one of these and what do they sell for? So we are Formally taking reservations right now. Uh, delivery of the Wingham OAC 540s are going to begin in the summer of 2022. So this year? This year? Six months. From Six now. months from now they begin. Is it equipped with any solar or can it be equipped with solar? And it, solar comes standard. A 210 watt solar panel on the roof is uh, standard. Uh, well, this is awesome. So to, uh, to get more information, the website? www.wingham.com. All right. This thing is really cool. I love the hardware, the cabinets, the material that they're made out of. It is cool. Yeah, they do make uh, RVs a lot different in Europe, and there's a lot to like about them. They say still this thing will be available come uh, fall in the U.S. It's going to be interesting to see. Come on in. Come on in. Holy smokes, what's that? <laughs> Factory installed. Uh, lithium. It really does have the feel of a home. And I long for a real oven. You can get up to 600 watts of solar. Well, I can see why everybody's driving around in fifth wheel. Check this out. This is the Keystone Arcadia. Now, I tell you, I've never had a fifth wheel, uh, but this one 
this one has me thinking. Now, let me just start by going to some of the cool things. Look at this pass-through storage in here. Look at how deep that is. Is uh, their solar flex system. Uh, it comes with solar. You can get up to 600 watts of solar. And of course, uh, Keystone has this, uh, this great deal with uh, Dragonfly batteries. Dragonfly is the, uh, is the parent company of uh, Battleborn batteries. And you can uh, have a factory installed uh, lithium. <laughs> you gotta see how nice this thing is inside. All right, walking in. Wow, look at this. Look at the decor of this thing. Uh, I like this, uh, I like this, uh, this dinette. Very comfy. Look at how much room it is. And you've got some chairs. Nice dinette. I mean, a, like a real table that you can eat at. And holy mackerel, look at this. Have you ever seen a sectional sofa in an RV? I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. In fact, as I think, I think it's very important that I kind of stretch out on this thing and really think. No, I have never seen a sectional sofa on on a fifth wheel or any RV for that matter. This is beautiful. Uh, so you've, you've got this really comfy sectional, big TV. Okay, so I went back and got Jennifer and I brought her back to this Arcadia. Uh, I, wanna, I wanna see her reaction to it. So um, we've never even thought about a fifth wheel, but you look want, at this. You want me to go in first? Yeah, no, I'm gonna go in first so I can get your reaction. Okay, okay. one, two, so, three, four, five steps. Five steps. This is 32 feet. 32 feet. 32 feet. Just know that our Class C is 25 feet. So it's only about seven, well, technically seven and a half feet longer. Well, you take all that overhang, it could be kind of about the same length. Right, except that's a bedroom up there. But let me just get your reaction because uh, I, want to, I just want to see what you think. Come on in. Come on in. All right, here I am. Oh, this is cute. How do you keep the wooden chairs from bouncing around? You know, I don't know. I don't know. I've never had one of these before. How do yeah, you keep them? I don't them? know how. I like the little L sofa back there. A uh, sectional comfy. sofa. Have you ever seen that? No, I've never seen a sectional sofa. Because that's how you sit. I yeah. sit like that. Oh, yeah. Well, this is, this is good. It really does have the feel of a home. Even the window treatment. Yeah. Dropping the drape. Big windows to open. This is, oh, a fireplace. It, I didn't notice that. We have a fireplace. Oh my gosh, it does. A nice bedroom. Very nice. Looks like a king size. It's a queen. A queen. But, but uh, take big. a look at the storage in there. Yeah. Well, I can see why everybody's driving around in fifth wheels. This is a home on wheels. What kind of mileage does it get? <laughs> Well, it doesn't get any. It's whatever you're towing it with. It's going to be right. Yeah, I've got to get out and push every now and then. But look at, you know, you got a little, it's just everything. Everything's just stand. all the touches, it the really, decor. It is decorated very nicely. And a real door. Yeah, a real door. And two real nightstands. And nice windows. Lots of storage. Check the bathroom out. Oh, I like the sliding door. Now I see why so many people have fifth wheels. It's big. But boy, is it nice, just like home. So, I think we now understand why so many people like fifth wheels, huh? I do. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, so, the Arcadia, uh, this is, there's several different models. This one is, as we said, 32 and a half feet long, goes up to 40 feet. Um, just uh, getting a lot of buzz out there. A lot of folks really like it uh, from Keystone. Um, we were impressed, I'll say that. We were impressed. They've been busy at our property at the Woodlands in Mid-Tennessee, clearing trees, installing utilities, and grading the pads where we'll park the RV. Since we put the driveway in two months ago, we've now added water lines, run them to what will eventually be our three RV spots, and we've installed a septic system so we can now empty our gray and black water tanks. So uh, we're here at our campsite now. This is the main campsite, and we have shown you this uh, since we started. Uh, this uh, is a drive-through site like here. This is flat right now, and I think 
I think we will eventually put uh, cement or concrete down there. Yeah, we're going to want a pad. Yeah. We had to uh, mulch a lot of uh, pines and make our septic field, but the septic field is there. And we made an extra big septic field so that someday, if we ever want to put a house here, we can. Between this side and the other one, we'll show you about 30 more truckloads of, of fill. You gotta be kidding me. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's probably about a five foot drop down there. So oh. we, we have to put it in. This will be a 30 by 20 pad uh, back in sight. They can, uh, they can come right down the driveway here, come around and then back in. So that'll be for guests. The fire pit over there, we're gonna move and we're gonna put that eventually right out here. Basically, we're on a mountaintop surrounded by 3,000 plus acres of wilderness. The other lots being sold around us range from over five acres to more than 100 acres in size. We have plenty of privacy and there are no restrictions on staying here in our RV. While we may choose to someday build a permanent home, there's no such requirements. It's our land and we can use it our way. So here is the site we're using. Uh, uh, this is, uh, again, the, the water spigot. This is a frost proof spigot. There's the sewer. And again, all this will be grayed. And you can see there's a little drop there. This will all be grayed and uh, the sewer will be much more level. And we have water hooked up. I mean, we've taken showers. Yeah, we can take a shower. I can wash dishes. I've got nice, clean, good water. And then uh, this is the other site right here. And this too will be a back-in site. You know, back in, uh, or you could drive in and then come back around if you're a good driver. But this will be 30 by 20. I mean, I can even see a volleyball court in there <laughs> and, or whatever. But we're going to make our fire pit right in the middle, a really nice fire pit. They've got a temporary one now. All i got to say is if somebody missed the volleyball and they had to go down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The beauty of this place at night. It was so quiet. We, and, there's no noise. No, there isn't any noise. And uh, I like the sun. I want the sun to be able to get us yep. and uh, to be out in the sun. Because from Michigan, we don't get a lot of sun. And so I'm looking forward to sunshine. Yep. So, so that's the progress so far, and uh, it's been it's been really nice uh, having the water, uh, the hot water that we we can use, the shower, uh, the dump, so we can stay here right on through, and we have solar in the RV and uh, uh, lithium batteries, so the electricity not having it has not been a problem. It's it's going to be fun. You know, it's. Uh, it, we're developing into this like a private little RV retreat that we can we can come to stay as long as we want. It's pretty cool. The other thing people ask us is, are you going to build anything permanent? Well, we don't have to. There's no requirement that we have to build. But we would be less than forthcoming if we didn't say we've certainly considered the possibility of building something like a barn dominium. Yes, and that's why we put in an extra big septic tank to accommodate a three-bedroom house. Yeah, uh, or or barn dominium. Yeah. That, that uh, that we could you know use with the RV. We are ahead of schedule in getting this thing developed. And that's good because the spring rains are going to come. Yeah. And Bo, he's found some wood to play with and chew and have a great time. He's already taken to loving his land, and uh, I think we are too. We have really fallen in love with this part of uh, of Tennessee and the people who live around here and uh, the beauty of this uh, this place. Turn right onto Bison Circle, then turn right. We stayed in the very comfortable campground, which has 61 sites and electricity and water. Stop. But our main reason was to explore the big bones found here that give the place its name. They have a nice display of the mammoth, the sloth, the giant bison. Their bones were preserved in the uh, salt deposits, and they're still discovering bongs today. They have a really nice uh, walking area where you can hike for, for some distance throughout the, the entire area here. And they have signs to remind you that uh, they still have the archaeological digs going on and fossils still remained here. And if you find anything, don't touch it, don't disturb it. It's not yours for the finding. Look, Mike, you can still see the salt leaching through here. Oh yeah, look at it. 
That's why they call it Big Bone Lick, right? Because uh, they uh, licked the salt. You know, what's so interesting is that the plant-eating animals came here to lick the salt and then the meat-eating animals came here to eat the plant-eating animals, the cycle of life. Yeah, most... Yeah, they got their salt from these animals. <laughs> most of the, of the bones that they have found here uh, date back to the late Ice Age, but they have found the remains of some animal species that they think go back as far as, uh, as 20,000 years. So, uh, it's been uh, used by animals uh, for a long time, and the salt uh, is still very much in evidence. This is a pretty remote area right now, but the early 1800s, lots of tourists came here. They'd make their way down the Ohio River by boat and then come, come ashore on land, come here and take baths, thinking that the baths had healing properties. They did that for about a hundred years. One misconception when people think about the Lewis and Clark expedition is that those two explorers were only in the West. Well, right here at Big Bone Lick uh, State Historic Site. Uh, there's a very strong connection to both Lewis and Clark. And the story really dates to 1803 when Meriwether Lewis, on his way to meet Clark uh, for their expedition to the North, stopped here uh, at the request of President Thomas Jefferson to send back some of the bones of these large creatures that were found here. Uh, Clark did that. They never made their way to Washington. Clark uh, eventually uh, w hooked up with Lewis when Lewis left here, and uh, the expedition to the West uh, went on. At, after it was over in 1807, Thomas Jefferson said, hey, where are those bones? And uh, William Clark then came here. He did a major excavation, sent back more than 300 bones. And it was very significant in the world of paleontology because it was those bones from right here that Clark sent that proved that the mastodon and the mammoth were two distinct species. There's your history lesson from today. Okay, Mike, do you know the difference okay. between a bison and a buffalo? I do, because I just read the sign, but uh, <laughs> but maybe somebody watching this doesn't know. Buffalo live in Asia and Africa. Bison live in North America. Well, there you go. Yeah, I always wondered about that. I kept saying, bison, buffalo, which, which are they? Now I know. We want to be politically correct for our bison friends. They're bison, not buffalo. The big herds of bison are long gone. But here at the park, they have a small herd so that you can see the calves and the bulls and get a feel for what it must have been like. There's a real short little area that you have to walk to get there. Maybe a quarter mile is all. It's not, not a hard hike at all, a gravel trail. So before you leave, go look at the bison. These guys will walk right up to the fence. They're very curious. They just, you just need to be very calm and not make any fast motions and not go any closer. There's actually a double fence here, see? So stay on this side of the rope. Don't make any, any uh, sudden movements. These guys are very curious. I've been just taking these pictures of them and they kind of have been following me around long as you're you're quiet and smooth this guy's been following me like a dog <laughs> yeah see why this is such a great place to visit see those bison bow those are bison they are big boys aren't they Big Bone Lick is a perfect weekend trip, so put it on your bucket list. Delightful place to bring your kids or your grandkids and just relax, explore, take hikes, look at the bison, talk about life, things, change, so, nature. So much to learn and see here. We're just a couple of miles from the Gulf of Mexico coastline in Florida's Big Bend area on the way to visit 
a new RV development offering huge RV lots. The development is called Golf Miss Landing and this isn't a campground or RV park. These are supersized ownership lots located in a beautiful coastal area perfect for swimming, boating and fishing. Now you own this land. This is your lot and you can do anything you want on it. Like uh, the folks here, they built a really nice uh, uh, kind of a covering uh, for their RV and they parked the RV in there and they've got a really nice uh, fire pit over here. Uh, it's your land. You can build on it, you can put your RV on it, you can landscape it. You can do what you want with it. You want this one, Bill? Is this the one you want? <laughs> These are really big lots. These properties start at half an acre. That's like half a football field. And when you think about your average campground, how you're all close together, you can almost touch your next door neighbor. Half a football field sounds pretty good. Look, Bo, deer tracks. Look at that. Go get those deer. Go get them. You see them? Where'd they go? <laughs> well, good afternoon. I am enjoying the peace and quiet and the warmth of the sun. I'm getting some vitamin D. A short distance from your RV property, you have all of this. This is the Big Bend area of Florida. That's the Gulf of Mexico out there. Great fishing and boating, huge wetland, undeveloped, peaceful and beautiful. All up and down the uh, coastline here in the Big Bend region are beaches like this undeveloped, unspoiled, there's uh, swimming of course, there's shelling, uh, scalloping, a lot of people love to do scalloping out here, uh, and then lots and lots of places around here with spectacular seafood. Now that is a beautiful speckled trout, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Fishing good here? Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> this entire Big Bend area is just a boater's paradise from kayaking to uh, to fishing to just recreational boating there are marinas up and down the shoreline offering both uh, wet and dry storage sunset in the Big Bend area it becomes not quite like Key West, but it is an everyday celebration. You know, what strikes me is uh, this year, particularly with these high gas prices, this just makes so much sense to have your own place so you don't have to be running from place to place trying to find an open site in the campground. You've got your own land, you can camp whenever you want, as long as you want. The uncertainty of the gas prices, what tomorrow might bring. And uh, like I say, it's hard to get into different places. Everybody's staying closer to home and Florida is such a desirable spot. Everybody wants to go to Florida. Okay, uh, we had a little emergency. Our refrigerator died yesterday. So the so good news I'm, is... Uh, I'm cooking up a lot of food, trying to use it up rather than just toss it. I did pick up a bag of ice and I put it in a garbage bag because you know how those bags of ice always uh, drip all over the place. And so far the inside of the refrigerator seems to be cool, but this would, would be a good time to have a little uh, thermometer to keep track of what the temperature is inside your refrigerator. Now my freezer, that food's toast. You have to push it down every time you open it. And somebody told us, always open it from the same direction. So, so we I do always that. open it that way. And then you have to go, hear it click, and yeah. make sure it shuts. But that's not the only little disappointment we have. We'll show you the next one in a second here when we uh, take off and so I'll give you a tour of um, what's been done on our property since the last time we updated this. Uh, but 
Right now it's time to eat. Hey, <laughs> making lemonade out of a broken refrigerator with sausage and eggs and toast. We got to look at our property and figure out where we're going and what we've been doing. The very first reality check and uh, <laughs> it's right here. Want to tell them what happened here? Yeah. Oh, Bo, Bo, don't drink out of a mud puddle. Bo does have real water, but likes that water, I guess. We uh, have a big mud puddle here and the reason they haven't filled it in with more rock is that we were thinking that we wanted a slab of cement right here. But that plan has changed. That plan has changed. This and was originally going to be our main site, but we changed our plans. Now our main site is going to be right here. And so instead of three sites, we do have a possible three. It's basically going to be two. It's going to be this site back here where we currently are. And then this site. And this was going to be our site. But now I can honestly say, I think the guest sites are better. So we had also planned to put, as you say, a cement concrete pad down here. But, um, and that would have, uh, that's why the, there's that, er, that water right there. There is erosion. I mean, the water is going to flow down. So, water goes down. And it was just going to flow across the concrete pad. But uh, since these two guest sites that we've made, or that we should say our friend Jonathan, our excavator has made, these are really nicer. And uh, these are going to be our main sites, I think. And then for guests, we can have a third site if we need right here, right? Yes. You know, we'll just back up. Yep. Show them what we've got here. We think when we pick up the fifth wheel that we're going to have, that this is where we will kind of keep it. And uh, it's a nice site. It really is fine. I think we're, we're, we're happy here. We could also use this as a main site. Yeah. We do have the hookups in. And this is a beautiful view. Oh, yeah. This is a really beautiful. So we explained this once before, but the landscape around here are valleys and uh, hollows. Or hollers, as hollers. Uh, locals call them. And uh, this is a hollow off here. And you can see it's like a little down it's beautiful though isn't that pretty very pretty so this is um <laughs> bo doesn't know what we're doing but, but he is in. checking it he out is in. whatever he is we're in. doing bo is in yeah you know uh, i looked at the uh, trail cam video the other day too and we we have a, a small herd of deer that uh, frequent here every night and there's a really little cute little armadillo as well so they're uh they're on the site but um, as we look across, we can show you how nice that looks, that site. Doesn't that look good? Yeah. These are premium sites. you got some space in between. And then we'll get some pebbles, stones, so that you Maybe can... Maybe some gravel. We'll, we'll, we'll figure, smooth that out. And then uh, we got to find a picnic table and our fire pit. And we're going to look for some native shrubs and flowering bushes and a few things to plant around there to landscape mm -hmm. it. I guess what all this is saying is the work that we have to do in developing it that we didn't take plan your on. time and think before you jump. Yeah. Now this is this is all new to us, so that's been thinking. Yeah, <laughs> thinking. We're good at jumping. <laughs> yeah, but it also this whole idea of developing it and and yeah, you know, um, at every turn there's another expense involved too. We should tell you that uh, the big problem we have to solve is erosion and uh, water flow. And uh, we're gonna look at Jonathan's recommendation on that today mm -hmm. and see what we can come up with. And uh, we do have a couple of other things to talk about. Uh, um, number one, uh, another reality check, these darn trees. These beautiful trees. Well, since the last time we were here, they have put in this utility pole and a lot of others. This is going to be ours, and a transformer is going to be on it, and this is going to be our source of electricity soon. We'll trench from there along the driveway back to the campsite. And uh, they say that should be done in just a couple of weeks. But we're not the only ones uh, doing some developing. This is uh, our next door neighbor. Uh, and uh, wow, they have really cleared out all their trees. Our excavator 
Jonathan, he's taking us to a site where we can see something that will help us with our erosion problem. We keep changing our plan and uh, it does cause new issues when we change our plan. <laughs> yeah, well the erosion problem, you know, is something that uh, we've just got to deal with because, uh, you know, we're in hilly country and uh, what, uh, what goes down has got to go out <laughs> and that's what the rain does. This is hilly country up here. We're on, on a mountaintop. Uh, but uh, the rivulets of erosion that we've had uh, is something that we want to we fix up. And Jonathan has got a solution we're going to go look at. Something called riffraff. Huh. <laughs> riffraff is something that you want to keep out, right? Maybe it's riffrack. I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out. I this recommend stuff? this. This I, this definitely helps as far as for uh, you know erosion control. Right. This helps a lot. So this mud we've been encountering, it's because of a lot of rain. <laughs> yeah. How much have you had? Like uh, what did somebody say? Just the other day, we had about eight inches of rain in four hours, and then uh, yesterday there was about an inch and a half to two inches. So Jonathan, this is what you recommend. This stuff. Yes. Okay. This was really a productive visit this time. Jonathan helped us out to get the vision of what we need to do with our problem of water. So next time we come. Well, we're gonna change a few things, right? Like yeah. you say, our, we have a new main site for uh, our RV, which would mm -hmm. be right the, the pad we're on now. We might extend it a little bit. We're gonna put that rip rack, uh, that rip rock in there. And uh, that'll be, uh, that'll keep down the erosion. He's over there looking quite comfy. <laughs> Hi, Bo. He's saying that that's, that's his site. Spot. That's his site. We also are, are got to find a bright picnic table. Some kind of some benches, benches, chairs, and there are a lot of uh, Amish and Mennonite folks around here, and uh, they build good things. As, so maybe that's worth checking into. We're about uh, just a little over a month away from having electricity as well. So it's all good. It's all good. Have you ever wondered how a fifth wheel is made? We are going to get the president of Keystone to show us how these new Arcadias are put together. What is really unique about this hitch pin though is the ARV technology. You can see this little gap right here on each side. Hello everybody and uh, well, we're on our way to the RV capital of the world, the greater Elkhart, Indiana area. We're actually going to Goshen, Indiana. And we are so excited, we can't wait. We are going to go meet our fifth wheel. Have you ever wondered how a fifth wheel is made? We are going to get the president of Keystone to show us how these new Arcadias are put together. So this is where your unit starts and this is what it looks like when it first rolls in the door and you'll notice that this chassis is a little different than everything else. We'll get into some of the details of that. Um, but this is the crawl space chassis. So this is where Arcadia begins. And this, explain this to me right okay. here. This is so, what, so this is this, a big deal, right? This is the spine, yep. This is what makes the crawl space work. So most chassis obviously run the cross members all the way up to the top of the I-beam. We don't do that. We shrink the cross members, we run this spine down the center, and that, on, that not only saves a little bit of, of space down below, but it saves a ton of space up, up above. You can see you've got three inches on each side that's just clear span. And this is your cross space. This gets you three inches that, that doesn't exist on any other RV out there. These of course are tanks. Oh, this, is... this is your rotocast, this is your freshwater tank. Your, your, your gray and black or two black tanks depending on the floor plan. And because you have this crawl space here, you can actually heat this, yep. right? So, so everything above the crawl space is heated and below the crawl space is heated. 
Okay, so from there, we come to here. This is our hyperdeck floor, so we sit it on top of the crawl space chassis and everything is fastened down, therefore completely insulating that crawl space that you just saw. Now what's this material right here between the floor and So you've the, got an aluminum it's perimeter. like a sandwich here. Yep, you got an aluminum perimeter with a block foam insulation in between. So insulation, 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 and that crawl space. Okay, so at this stage of the game, we're starting to pull our electrical and our plumbing through that crawl space. That's these harnesses right here. This is our unified wiring. So this is one of the most important steps. We're starting to set our water heaters, we're starting to run our electrical and connect our convenience center. So this is where the heart of the unit really comes together. These are all the, all the mechanical stuff. All right, so now we're inside wall set. If you want to see what they look like when they come in the door, you can see them right over here. Oh, look at that. So we're all aluminum, block foam insulation, um, fiberglass on the exterior. At this point, we're starting to put some of the pretty into the coach. We're setting the ba bedroom, bathroom up, and we're putting things like backsplashes in the kitchen. So now we're in roof set, and we've got the ceiling on. There's the roof. One of the things we always talked about on Arcadia is we want to bring the outside in. So you see we're in window set, we put the Thank largest you. windows that we could in the sidewall. So you know what this is? This is a slide out. And we're going to roll this right into the sidewall of this coach. Right over here it goes. Look at that. The hole already ready for it. All right, so we've gone from there to here. Look at how fast it's all come together. We're getting cabinet doors set. We're getting handles on. We're getting furniture in. We're almost done. Okay, and this one's pretty much all done. Now it's just time for you to take yours out and enjoy it. All right, we are more than ready. And here it is. This is our unit, fresh off the Keystone assembly line. After going through a second series of quality control checks, it's about to be shipped for delivery. We got a chance to briefly go through it and learn from the Arcadia product manager a few of the unique features that made it the RV of the year. Literally slide it to the right. Things that's kind of nice about all of this is the spring-loaded pull pin. So you've got all sorts of adjustability on height or anything. So if you're in a place where the ground is a little bit uneven and you need to just that simple to adjust them. is that when these steps go up, they're not exposed like a step underneath to the salt and the grime and the road. Yeah, yeah they're not going to get all dirty and all of that stuff as you're going down the road, exactly. Right. Something I really like, there's a bottle opener right there. <laughs> oh, you sure I mean, it's a bottle I opener? I mean, for crying out loud, let, let's, get our, let's get our priorities right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's the hook for the dog's leash? I, I, oh, they there. got one. Most people do. Where's the doggy? Right there. Whoa. And he gets a little shade from the overhead. Yeah, perfect. The Kurt ARV hitch pin, the head pivots back and forth. This rubber pad here is designed to reduce the effect of what we call chucking, which is a sensation that you get pushing and pulling the tow vehicle, uh, the RV does to the tow vehicle. So this is designed to rock back and forth and eliminate uh, the effects of chucking. So a lot of products out there have this feature. What is really unique about this hitch pin though is the ARV technology. You can see this little gap right here on each side. So those five attachment bolts are actually grommeted in rubber on each side. So there's 10 rubber grommets on there. Uh, those rubber grommets are designed to reduce vibration by about 50%. Uh, you won't feel that in your truck, but your RV will feel that going down the road. So it's uh, less of an earthquake inside the RV. Exactly. By reducing vibration 50%, it really improves the long-term durability of your unit. So the big question for me is, how do I make this into a bed? Super easy. Super easy. That's what um, I like. Yeah, this is all Velcroed on there. Just pull that off. Pull this one off. Set it right over there. Grab this right here. Mm -hmm. Lift it up. Kind hey. of fold it out. Sometimes those are even cooperate and fold out by themselves. Yeah, secure those legs. Set it down. Go back here. 
This hinges down, and there you go. All right. Looks pretty comfy. Definitely comfy. Scooch back here. Ooh. They're super easy to put in whatever position you want, or to store all the way up at the top. You're you're a big guy. I'm about six four. And look at that. I used to be taller, but I'm getting older. <laughs> yeah, it, it does happen. Uh, look at that. There's a lot of room. This is an eight foot ceiling. Yeah, back here you've got about eight foot. You're gonna have uh, about nine foot up there. So yeah, a lot of headroom. So even though this is a mid profile uh, fifth wheel. We really designed it with very tall ceilings, which then allow us to have taller slide rooms. From the Keystone factory, our Arcadia was shipped to Camping World, the dealer we chose to purchase it from. Home. <laughs> well, at Camping World, we also had them install the fifth wheel hitch onto our truck. We chose a top of the line A20 sliding hitch from Kurt. That's the same company that made the fifth wheel hitch pin that we showed you earlier. While they installed the hitch, a team of techs prepped and cleaned our Arcadia for delivery, giving everything a final quality inspection. Uh, check the fresh water tank, all that. Then we made the purchase and officially took yes. possession of our brand new RV. Yep, Jennifer and Mike. All right. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Yeah. We got chairs, we got our you the whole campsite set up. Look at Bo, you got toys. My goodness, you really cleaned this up. It looks wonderful. Yes. Oh, there's a toy. Yeah, there's a toy. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but what does it taste like? Yeah, <laughs> look at that. That's great. Come on, Bob, yeah. guys. Well, it's ours. We've left Camping World on our very first camping trip. This is kind of a shakedown cruise for us. We are camped near Lake Michigan and we're gonna spend uh, four or five days out there testing this thing out. And this is not the full review. That is coming later once we figure it all out ourselves. Yep, we'll give you, I mean, a total walkthrough. The other thing we gotta do is equip this. We gotta get all of our accessories and cooking stuff and we got to organize it. We'll be doing videos on that. Uh, this was an attempt to show you how this thing was built uh, and you saw all those features. Those were the features that convinced us that we wanted to try a fifth wheel. It's all new to us uh, and we are having fun learning about it. We spent our first official night in it last night uh, and it was very nice. Everything went great. Yep, so we'll have lots more to say including uh, uh, us going to driving school. Jen went to driving <laughs> school and I went to, and we'll tell you what that's like hauling it. We've never hauled a fifth wheel uh, and we've never had to drive around a big truck, but we're learning all sorts of new things. So this is the first of many videos about our experience in the fifth wheel world and camping and exploring, and we can't wait to, uh, to get back out there. Spring is here in Michigan and we're gonna do some travel. Now we have only owned this uh, new Arcadia for a little over a week and uh, this is not a review that will be coming a little bit later on on the uh, RV Lifestyle channel on YouTube but uh, this is our first impressions of uh, kind of living in it and uh, towing it for the first week we've had it. Uh, our impressions, the things we've learned, and answering some of the questions that you've asked us about it. All of our other RVs have been Class Bs or Class Cs. This is the first fifth wheel we've ever had, and uh, like I said, it's different. Different in a good way. All right, let's start with my truck. It's big. <laughs> this is the tow vehicle. And if you are a regular, you have probably uh, heard us talk about how hard it is to find uh, a Super Duty truck. I searched all across the country. I probably spent uh, two months trying to find one at, uh, at an affordable price, and uh, none of them are affordable. Uh, the one we finally settled on is gently used. This is a 2021 Ford F-250 Lariat 4x4 diesel. 
and uh, we have been very pleased with it. We were a little worried that there might have been a smoker involved in owning it before. Uh, there wasn't. It smells just fine in there. In fact, it smells like it's a, it's a new truck. Had only 28,000 miles, and you know, on a diesel, that's just breaking it in. But uh, getting used to driving it uh, is a challenge. It is. Uh, it's a, it's a big truck. Um, but it's a good challenge because uh, in just the uh, two weeks that I've owned the truck, uh, I've pretty much fallen in love with it. I, uh, I really enjoy driving it. You know, we wanted to just see how far the truck stuck out. I didn't think it would fit all the way to the garage, but I forgot about the heights. This is a big truck. So it probably uh, I don't think it could. It isn't going to fit in. It there. might fit in, barely, no. but the antenna wouldn't. No. And, uh, it's and it's too long. Yeah, I, didn't, I thought it would make a funny picture how much it would stick out in the back. I didn't realize that the height was there as well. But you got to admit, it's a nice truck. If you like big trucks, it is a beautiful truck. And so far, so good. Now we were, I gotta say, a little apprehensive because what well, we've never towed anything this big before. But I have to keep telling myself that I'm towing something because it's... You better keep telling yourself you're towing something. <laughs> yeah. It's been really smooth. And in terms of gas mileage, I was very curious what I would do with uh, gas mileage when I'm towing this thing. And it looks right now that I'm averaging just about 14 miles a gallon uh, for towing. And uh, just to put that in perspective, on our Class C Leisure Travel Vans uh, motorhome, I get 12.4. So, uh, so far that's, uh, that's been pretty exciting. Here we are, our first lunch on the road. We are just going to have peanut butter and jelly. I was going to make sandwiches before we left, but uh, this is working out. Just now, I, sh I should point out, we are hooked up to the truck. We are at a rest stop, and all the slides are in, but we can still fix our lunch. Yeah, looks like Bo's already in position in the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So this is very nice, and if we wanted to take a nap, like we did in the motorhome. We would have to kick Bo off. We'd have to kick Bo off, but we've got those uh, sofas and uh, one can sleep here and one could rest here. This isn't a review, it's just my first impression of the kitchens. If you look to the left, we've got our seating area. We're gonna have some lunch. I've got the oven on. First time I've had an oven in a long time. Turned it on. Preheating. It's getting nice and warm in there. I'm going to warm up the soup. I'm going to turn that burner on and warm up the soup. And you can see I got the microwave right up above. And right behind me is the sink and the kitchen area. One of the things you can't do enough of is reading your owner's manual. Go over it, go over it, and go over it. But I do have to say, I am a little distracted by these windows. They do such a good job of bringing the outside in. Now, we're just in an ordinary park right now, but I can't wait to get to some beautiful spot and be surrounded by nature and just sit and look out these windows. Okay, here's the big deal. And it is a big deal. It's the source of most of my aggravation. In fact, if I'm really honest, I'm a little scared about it. And that is hooking up the kingpin here onto the hitch. It is um, a bit of a challenge. And as a challenge, uh, I've got to line that up just right. I've got to back up uh, the, the truck. I got it in there. Jennifer can kind of help me, but I don't want to mess it up. Uh, now, uh, Lippert, which is uh, the big uh, RV supplier, they make a device called One Touch Auto Level. It's on most of the fifth wheels uh, that are sold today. It's a really handy tool. You just push a button and it will automatically level the unit for you. It works awesome most of the time. 
but if it's a little bit of an uneven surface that you're backing up onto and hooking up on uh, the the units uh, a little bit uneven it doesn't work so well sometimes and then you have to manually uh, level it that's the challenge that I'm facing that was the time that is my challenge as I try to settle everything in here and make it mine and put everything where it needs to be where it's not going to slide or bump and know what I need to bring so I've got some cushiony shelf lighter that I'm cutting and I'm putting it in these drawers I've got pots and pans in here but just something to keep things from banging and uh, so I'm going to do that I really like the lip this one I'm I, I think I'll have to get a uh, one of those rods that goes across here so that things don't come out but I've been thinking a lot about rods maybe I'll have a couple of them I don't want things shifting a lot a nice thing is that I can put this shelf at different levels so I got to find a home for everything and over here this is my challenge I have I ended up buying a couple of baskets and in this basket I'm tall I can reach I'm going to have some paper plates, my real plates, and some bowls. And I'm just going to put those up here and then set it in there. It's a tight squeeze, but it does work. And I've got another one there for some bowls, and I'll put things in the middle. I don't think I, I don't know what I'm going to do, but right now that's what I'm doing because I don't want things smashing and banging together. I bought one of these. I might buy more. I'm not sure what I'm going to put in it. But I've got one. Go back and get a couple other colors maybe. And that could look pretty through there. I think this is going to work for my dishes. And if it doesn't work, I'll figure something else out. Where to even put the paper towel roll is always a decision. I got the world's littlest dish rack, which is great for me. Works just fine. And uh, I'm getting things the way I want them. Something to protect the sink, the interior of the sink figuring things out where I want everything to go that's always the challenge for me development that's about to be offered for sale for RVers and what's really cool about this one is it's located on a whitewater river. We're in northwestern Alabama near the historic town of Jasper visiting a development called Blue Water Bend. This is a destination spot for those who love the outdoors and water sports located on a whitewater river in a pristine area offering unparalleled privacy. Here's the bonus. When you buy one of these properties, you get an RV lot right on the river. I mean, it's not just an RV lot. It's electric hookups and water hookups. And you are right on this river. Can you hear it? Alabama has, if not the lowest, one of one of the lowest tax rates anywhere in America. So you're going to get a, a big bang for your retirement bucks in a state like Alabama and in a development like this where you've got an RV spot and you got a big enough lot where you can build a house someday if you want for your retirement or as a second home. This is Lewis Smith Lake, beautiful blue water lake, great for fishing and boating, and it's only 15 minutes from Blue Water Bend. This is a big lake. It's uh, got a shoreline, as they say, of about 500 miles, and uh, they pull some pretty big bass out of here.
love that river. Love that river. One of the nicest kayak rivers uh, in, uh, in the south. So that's to say about Blue Water Bend. Hello everybody. We are at a place called Paradise Landing on Kentucky Lake in Tennessee. Okay, we are all unhitched and we are in our spot. We're right next to a covered pavilion, so we've got shade. We are right on the water. This is awesome. And best yet, we are just in time for a sunset. We have been traveling all over trying to find RV property and finding something like this is truly a gem. With the economy crazy, with the world absolutely gone mad, to find something like this where you can stay, buy some land, sit, contemplate life, and just enjoy. Well, good morning. We slept so well last night. Not a sound anywhere. Kentucky Lake is as beautiful in the morning as it was last night at sunset. Each of the properties at Paradise Landing are right on the shore of Kentucky Lake. They are pure ownership. You can put in your own dock if you want. There is even free storage for your RV and your boat. The properties have electricity, septic and central water and high-speed fiber optic internet available. There's no HOA and property taxes are only about $300 a year. If you make Tennessee your full-time residence, you'll pay no state income tax. Nashville is one of the fastest growing towns in the country, offering so many things. Fine restaurants, great shopping, and of course, everywhere you go, music. From Paradise Landing, it is so easy to head out for a day's exploring or shopping or entertainment in Nashville and then come back home to the peace and quiet and beauty of Kentucky Lake. I think there are two uh, factors that are really driving this uh, trend to buy your own uh, RV property. The first is the price of gas. It just keeps going up and up and there's no, there's no uh, end in sight. And the second trend is related to that, and that is uh, more and more people 
are um, are doing stay vacations. They're staying in one place or finding a place uh, that isn't across the country. Uh, and then, of course, you know, you have still the crowded campgrounds. Here, uh, you can stay as long as you want. You don't ever have to worry about having a reservation. And uh, you can invite your friends and your family, other campers. I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense to own your own uh, RV property. And you could rent it out if yeah. you wanted to. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people have been. Hi everybody, we're Mike and Jennifer, and this is our new fifth wheel. Now in this video, it's gonna be a walkthrough. So first, we're gonna start in the front of the Arcadia and show you the bedroom. We've put in 600 watts of Keystone's solar flex solar panels. Absolute favorite thing about this. Hi everybody, we're Mike and Jennifer, and this is our new fifth wheel, the Arcadia 3250, and this is the much promised total walkthrough, inside and out. So, I do the inside, and you, sir, get the outside. Yeah, it, it just to give you the bottom line, we uh, have had this now for, as we record this, about six weeks. We have traveled a little over a thousand miles in it. We've probably camped in it uh, about three weeks of those six in various trips. And uh, that is more than enough for us to tell you we really like this thing. And we're going to show you why. Let's start with my tow vehicle. In this case, it's a heavy duty Ford F-250 Lariat. It's a 4x4. This is a 2021 model. And uh, it's a diesel and uh, it does a great job in pulling and uh, to pull it i installed the kurt a20 fifth wheel hitch in the bed of the truck now uh, we went with the a20 technically that could handle 20,000 pounds it could pull that that's uh, way more than i need for our arcadia the length of our arcadia 3250 rl that stands for rear lounge is 32.5 feet. Its uh, height is 13.4 feet at its highest point. Let me start with uh, what's up on top on the roof. Uh, we have uh, optioned, uh, it's an option, uh, extra accessories. We've put in 600 watts of Keystone's solar flex solar panels. Now they call it flex, doesn't mean that the panels are flexible. They're actually hard panels and they're mounted on the roof. All right, one of the things you're going to learn about this is both outside and inside, we have a tremendous amount of storage space. Let's start right here. But that, uh, that solar power feeds into the coach batteries, the house batteries, and those are three 100 amp hours Dragonfly lithium batteries. Dragonfly is the parent company of Battleborn batteries, which uh, if you're a regular follower of the RV lifestyle, you've heard us talk about a lot. Uh, so that whole power system is well laid out inside here. This is a 3000 watt Victron inverter. These are 30 pound propane tanks. Now you can run them all at once. In other words, drain off of 60 pounds. I don't really recommend that because should you run out, then you're out. Instead, I, uh, I sip off of one 30 pound and when that is empty, I switch over to this one and I have plenty of time to get that propane filled. But as I say, it just sips. It doesn't take much at all. You just uh, put the key in and open it up. This uh, compartment is, uh, I'm using it here to store a couple of uh, solar panels. But uh, in here, inside the, the wall, is a pegboard. See this pegboard? And it's really nice. I haven't gotten the chance to do this yet, but you can put hooks and hang some tools on there. And that's just a really handy place to go to get the things that you need uh, and to be able to use them. I like that. Pegboard. Moving on. Here's the other end of that uh, pass-through storage. And you can see how much room we have in here. And uh, this is also nice. There are uh, lights in here as well so that you can get all your stuff out. We keep uh, uh, our chairs, uh, our grill, 
all sorts of other stuff and I haven't even come close to filling that up yet. And here is the other propane tank, 30 gallon propane tank. And uh, this is where the control is for switching between tanks or having them both draw at the same time. Now it's my turn. Come on in and I'll show you the interior of the Arcadia. So first we're going to start in the front of the Arcadia and show you the bedroom. Now we have a queen size bed that is extremely comfortable. You notice the nice headboard for putting things that you want to put there, your glasses or whatever you need to put there. We have the cabinet storage up above, which is very handy, very, very useful. And you can't ignore these two nightstands, nightstands with storage underneath the drawers. We have big, big drawers, lots you can put in there. Lots of storage room. And, and this is a fun cabinet. This is lots of fun. It's got storage. Whatever you want to put in here, you can do it. And the neat part is, this connects to the bathroom, this area. So, hello there. <laughs> here we go, the bathroom. We've got the cute little barn door, sliding pocket, well, not a pocket door, barn door. We have a ceiling fan, which we like. We've got our towels, the toilet, toilet paper, a nice big shower. I'm not hitting the walls anymore with my elbows. I appreciate the shower. And something that I really appreciate in the shower, there are three little shelves on both sides. So multiple people have got space for their shampoo, their conditioner, their soap, whatever they need for their needs. And this, we have our master controls, ceiling lights, all the, the slides, everything we need is here. Second air conditioning unit is here. This is an important switch for the winter time. You turn this on to heat your lithium batteries. Now, this is the main living space. You come in our door. What do you see first? You see our sink, our kitchen sink, and our cabinets. We have a huge cutting board. We have a huge sink underneath. Open that up. A nice sink. Up above, storage. Lots of storage. We have a nine cubic foot refrigerator and I can't tell you how nice that is for when you're planning for a long trip. Top, we have the freezer part, lots of space. And the bottom, uh, we've got the refrigerator part. Continuing over here is a pantry. I put my spices in there. Whatever you want to put in there is handy. Next to that is the microwave. A good size microwave, I might add. The windows. You've got windows here. We put some vinyl on them. Rather than putting curtains or whatever, we decided that's what we would do. I've got three burners that work awesome. And then I have my oven. A nice, good size oven. The fireplace is awesome. You can turn it on and the heat, you can direct it out. So if you need to get that morning chill out of the air, you can do that with that or you can send the heat elsewhere. And the fun part is the flames can be three different colors. Amuses the kids greatly. The big kids too. So you can uh, have fun with the fireplace. Now if you take this strap off, You've got some surprise space under here, all the way around. Lots of storage. Whatever you need to bring, you have room to bring it. Our absolute favorite thing about this, Arcadia Keystone has a slogan with their windows about bringing the outside in. So we have all these beautiful windows to look out and to see the beauty of nature. Look at how you can see out and see the beauty. It really makes it pop out there. The beautiful colors of green, the water. Can you imagine sand, beach, and all the different places that you go to? Can you imagine in the winter being out there in the cold weather and the snow and looking out and, and seeing the beauty? So with these windows, we have come to treasure and value them. So the L-shaped sofa and the surprise is this part will make into a queen size bed. So if you have guests, just open that up and make a queen size bed. Now, 
Another favorite area, we have a real kitchen table that's up all the time. Two comfy chairs and the bench. We use this as our kitchen table. We use this as our office. When we need to work, we can sit here. We have a desk set up all the time. We don't have to do a whole bunch of rearranging. Well, we hope we didn't bore you with all that. This is our first tour, and our second tour will be how we accessorize. Yep, everybody's already asking about furnishings and what we bought and how we organized it, and, and we'll do a whole video on that as well. But this is the walkthrough inside and out. Um, the other question we get is how does Bo like it? And Bo likes it. He, Bo does like it. Yeah, he uh, has room to spread out. Uh, he's not underfoot. Uh, that has been really nice. It's all good. For me, it's those windows, those beautiful panoramic windows and bringing the outside in. Uh, Keystone uh, RV really nailed it with those uh, windows on the uh, Arcadia. We are in Goshen, Indiana, and as you know, we have picked up a new uh, Arcadia 3250 fifth wheel. Woohoo! Yeah. Except we've never driven a fifth wheel before. <laughs> no. <laughs> so we've decided we better put ourselves in fifth wheel driving school. Mm hmm. And uh, we're going to learn. Are you ready to drive this thing? I am. You ready to back up this thing? No, but I'm ready to go forward. I don't believe in going backwards. <laughs> I only go forward. <laughs> well, you're going to have to go backwards today. Someday. Jennifer, welcome to Team Arcadia Driving School. You can put in an app that's actually, you don't have to drive 65, but you know, try to stay 50 to 60, you know. That's the sweet spot. Yeah, that's the sweet spot because the, the bottom of the upper deck of the fifth wheel needs to be right about here. And that, what that is in their instructions for the hitch is a four to six inch gap between the side rail of the truck and the bottom of the fifth wheel. Move your seat forward to where you get comfortable and, and then readjust the mirrors. Mm -hmm. Where's the student driver sign? <laughs> All right, so here I go. Yeah, so you roll out, make your name. Roll out, because nobody's coming. Yep. Perfect. Make a blind to it. So if I, if I stay under 40, I'm comfortable. Yeah. Mike, you're going to feel very comfortable driving this, and the danger is going to be that you're going to be overconfident, but that's why you got a wife. <laughs> I don't even know I got anything back there, which could be dangerous. Okay, Mike, it's your turn. Let's see if you can do as well as Jennifer did. Yeah. She's beat me in every other sport we've tried. <laughs> I suppose she'll beat me in this. What did I do with the fifth wheel? Where is it? I don't feel it. No, you don't feel it. You have to remember no. to allow more time to well, you know stop you're, and more time before you pull out. You know you're Well, you'll feel it when you something. go to stop. Yeah, yeah, let's see. And he's cutting it. Because it, you'll feel it, you know, the extra weight. Yeah. It has to work a little bit harder to get everything stopped. If you're more used to using your left mirror, as long as you know where you are in reference to the yellow line, you're always going to be okay on the, on the white line. Some roads don't have a white line on the side of them too, so. But that's a great tip. Even for my motorhome, I know when I, I always do the left, but but sometimes I find myself way too close over there. And this yeah. is, I think, a really good reference just to keep that over there. Okay, nice wide turn. Well, that's interesting, because if you just hug that the white on the white line it just it clears it yeah you don't have to go over it. Yeah. i see that. i see why you have to aim for that so what you want to do is back up and and keep that view in your mirror straight yeah just so back up straight if you start to lose it that's when you'll steer there you go it'll come back now turn your wheel to the right turn your wheel to the right there, now you can see the side of the camper. Yeah, it's starting to turn okay, a little keep bit. Keep your wheel turned to the right, because you, you want the camper to start to track around. Oh, I'm right there now. 
keep turning your wheel to the right. Okay, now just straighten it out and keep backing up. Keep on going. And you'll, and more of it will come into view as you're going. Now Dad. turn your wheel to the left and you're going to follow that trailer around. Turn it to the left. Turn your wheel to the left. Okay, now. I got it. I'm hitting. Okay, hold up right here. See where the pad is? Yeah. And imagine that uh, imaginary line coming straight out off of the edge of that pad. So for us to, to catch the edge of that pad, you're going to need to start to turn it sharper now. So you're going to want to turn to the right. Yeah, turn your wheel to the right and back up. There we go. Straight back, you got it. That's about it right there. Yeah. Okay, Mike and Jennifer, you've officially passed your driving school. You're ready to go camping. <laughs> All right. Thank you. You have made us confident and excited. I'm yes. glad. Yes. I'm glad. Okay, you're that driving. Very comfortable. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> went through the Keystone factory. I was really impressed with that, uh, the hustle of the uh, people and uh, the product that they're turning out. Looks like it's really a good product. So that's a, a vote of confidence for the Keystone.
lot how important the tire pressures are and uh, tires are really important. Oh, I've learned it's really important to check your tire pressure and the heat of your tire. Oh my goodness, and we don't do that every time. And also tighten your lug nuts right before you leave. That was like really important. It's inspired me to actually do more uh, inspections on my RV prior to, prior to a trip. It comes stock with, of course, the leaf springs right here. And then next to that are the shocks. And what we've added now uh, is the airbags right here. Yeah. All right, today we have um, an Airlift 7500 XL kit that uh, we will be installing on a 2021 F-250. And this will uh, wind its way up and uh, into the hood where it will tie into the truck battery. I am on my way to uh, fix something, <laughs> to fix this. I love, I love my truck, but can you see it takes the bumps a little bit rough? The problem I'm having is when I'm towing our fifth wheel and uh, these uh, nasty roads, you really feel all the bumps. So, uh, following the advice of a number of you who have uh, offered suggestions as I've shared this dilemma uh, on our Ask Us Anything program and uh, on other YouTube videos, I am on my way now to Lansing, Michigan. Airlift is an all-American company, been around since 1949. They have a network of shops all across the country that do installs and sell this, uh, this suspension system. But uh, it's probably the gold standard for, uh, for trucks and for those who are hauling things like RVs. Uh, other people use them, you know, for taking all in boats and things like that. But for RVs looking to smooth out that suspension, um, this is the system to get. Today we have um, an Airlift 7500 XL kit that uh, we will be installing on a 2021 F-250. And these springs uh, don't replace any of the suspension components. It's an add-on system um, that gets installed in the rear axle that provides 7500 pounds worth of load leveling capacity. So as trailers or other items get installed in the truck, these springs get installed between the axle and the chassis and allow you to inflate them uh, and bring up the rear of the truck to level that load and enhance the suspension capabilities. Okay, just a little background on what we have for suspension on this F-250. Now, uh, we haven't taken anything off, we've just added to it, but uh, it comes stock with, of course, the leaf springs right here, and then next to that are the shocks, and what we've added now uh, is the airbags right here. And what these are going to do is smooth out the ride. It's gonna, gonna make it much smoother when when you hit bumps instead of the sharp things that you feel when you're juggling all over the road this will smooth it out and it's adjustable we can control how much air we're going to put in there this has the air manifold which is the electronic components and then the compressor pre-installed on this on this heavy duty bracket and then this bracket just goes up and gets bolted right on this system comes with our wireless controller.
All right, we're about ready to uh, take off now. Um, the control is pretty simple. They give you a remote control device. There's also an app that will work on the, the smartphone. They told me to kind of experiment around with the different settings, how many pounds of pressure. Uh, they normally range from um, five to, you know, uh, up. you can go up to a hundred, but that's way too many. Okay, here's the proof. I am, um, I'm now riding and I'm not bumping every two seconds. There's not this constant bumping. Uh, the camera is not moving. <laughs> Putting those uh, airlifts on and um, just, just, you know, before and after to me is pretty, pretty remarkable. So. Uh, I'm going to be really anxious when we hook up the fifth wheel and we uh, take off with that. We're working on it, Paul. We're, We're working, working on, on it, Paul. We're working on it. Okay, I have been traveling with this five to eight pounds without the um, fifth wheel attached. Now that it's attached, they tell me to start it by going to 20 pounds. So here we go. We're adding it. You'll hear the compressor kick on if you were over that way. And you'll see this thing eventually start to rise. Onward and upward. Well, I'm glad you have those airbags. And do you keep it at 20, the pressure? Well, since it's the first time towing, they said start at that and just see how that goes and to play with it. So this will be our big test to see if it uh, if, it's, if it really works right. All right, here we go. You ready? I'm ready. Well, I think this is a much smoother ride. Yeah, I do too. And, and look at Bo back there. He's, <laughs> he's enjoying it. He's uh, not bouncing around. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to tell sometimes in Michigan because the roads are just, uh, honest, I mean, this is, this is Few states, if any, that are any have any worse roads than Michigan, I think. But um, you know, it, it seems to be. It's hard. You, you hardly know it's back there right now. So I have it set at twenty pounds, and I think that's pretty good, don't you? Ed, this is a nice ride. Our private RV retreat that we've been developing at the Woodlands at Buffalo River is now all done. It is a beautiful area. People are so friendly, but what we really like is how private this is. We're in Linden, Tennessee, and we're excited because our private RV retreat that we've been developing at the Woodlands at Buffalo River is now all done and we're we're pulling in. Oh my goodness, everything, all the utilities are in. Look. Look, it, our gate's in and uh, let me go open it up for us. All right. This is our new home away from home. You get the gate.
Our parcel is five acres of beautifully forested land. Maybe we should just give everybody a quick look at how we did this. And uh, we bought in, in November of 2021. And uh, here it is as we do this in August of 2022 when we can say it's done. We have uh, put in gates. Uh, we have a U-shaped driveway, which we'll walk right now. This is one of our gates here that uh, you saw us open at the beginning of the shots. And that's basically, you know, because we have three water hookups, um, not that I don't think it would ever be a problem, but we just want to have uh, security that uh, when we're not here, nobody else is, is on, the, on the property. There's one spot where our truck is. <laughs> we just decided to park our truck there. It's in the shade. There's where we parked uh, our fifth wheel. And that is uh, one of the spots. And right in the middle, where you can see that post coming up between uh, our heads there, that is a third spot. So we have three spots with hookups full hookups and we have sewer water and electric and electric and um as jen said we're we're going to share it with some friends from time to time but it's a retreat for us that's what we wanted this for we wanted a place where we could just go sit and read look at the sky go for walks ride a bike and uh listen to the wind blowing through the pines and now that we are here we're meeting our neighbors and many of our neighbors are starting to develop their sites as well we thought we would uh, take a little trip and introduce you to some of them so you guys are really right at it at your property yeah we're working hard at it uh, we're about two-thirds at least two-thirds complete uh in the next uh two weeks um uh, three on the outside we should be all completed with our lot we have uh, two full hookup sites and a third just uh, electrical hookup with uh, 30 amp and uh, 50 amp uh, for that site. And same thing for the other two. We had the rip wrap put in today. Uh, there was virtually no erosion here from all the rain that we've had before the rip wrap was put in, but we had to put in anyhow to, to just reinforce it just in case it rains like Noah's flood. So how so, do you guys plan to use all this Bo wants to know he's so uh, he's right here asking the questions is, where we're standing right now is one site and we're going to use this site as a pull-in site site for somebody then uh, right across from us right here is um, another site with full hookups over here to back up with the trailer or our fifth wheel or any art type of RV maybe in the future we might put a cabin out here and who knows what's in the future but yeah there's there's uh, things that we can do with this land. We got 11 acres here. Our neighbors to the west, Brad and Mary, are living in their trailer while they build a barn dominium. We were for originally from New Mexico, but what we did is uh, we found this little this little piece of heaven here in Tennessee, and we decided to uh, to leave there and move here and and kind of just enjoy this quiet life and and. Uh, I started a little small business, it's a mobile RV tech business, and, and we've been really enjoying living here in Tennessee. Our little barn dominium has just gone up, and it's a 1,200 square foot. It's made by uh, a company, a local company here, and uh, we, really, we really are looking forward to moving into that and, uh, and enjoy you know, this, this area, this little slice of heaven that we're in. So Mary, tell me the truth, living here full time, do you ever feel like a frontier woman? I mean, you need the bird cage with the little canary in it? <laughs> Absolutely. We lived here about 30 days and never saw another person when we came in the winter. So it felt like that at first. And then people started trickling in. So, and it's been wonderful. The people who, are, who bought lots up here are wonderful people. We've met most of them and just a bunch of good people who wanted to get away and just have a little retreat for themselves. Yeah, it's really calm. So the ones that come and visit and they sit and they're just relaxed, you can just see it on their face and how they just relax and just really enjoy how being out here and, and how quiet it is. You know that we enjoy the woods. We really like the remote part here and being able to be kind of away from it all. But we also like the water. 
And the Buffalo River is only half a mile from our location, as half a mile as the crow flies. So we have the river, we have the water close by, and yet we have the woods as well. What do you say we give them a peek at the Buffalo River and tell them how cool that is? I think that's a good idea. So the Buffalo River is just a stone's throw from our spot at the Woodlands. Uh, there's a canoe or a boat launch there. This is a favorite river for fishermen. It's world renowned for smallmouth bass. Uh, they say there's 85 species in here. Watch out, boat. Yeah. Well, but I don't know what all they are. So what's the best of that fish they got in here? I'd say smallmouth for sport fishing. But it is also a absolutely fantastic kayaking river. That was great fun. Oh, the river's so calm and peaceful. No need to worry. It's, it's a piece of cake. So you can canoe on the Buffalo River, you can kayak on the Buffalo River, but you can also take this raft that they call the Monster, and you can just float down. And this is pretty, this is my idea of whitewater rafting. Ah, I'm just glad there's no white water because this is calm and peaceful. We are gonna invite some friends over, uh, even uh, this week as we're here doing this video and uh, camp with us. And uh, uh, I, I think you can tell that Jen and I are really excited. Just having the peace of mind of being here in God's creation, in the woods, um, it's, it's so nice. What a place to decompress and unplug and enjoy ourselves. We can't wait to use this fire pit. We're ready to get a good fire going at night and roast some marshmallows. It's time to officially name our little RV retreat here at the Woodlands, uh, at the Buffalo River. So we have thought hard about what are we gonna call our little getaway? And uh, we had a lot of people make suggestions. Most common one is people said we should call it the Wendlands Wonderland or <laughs> the Woodlands, the Wendlands at Woodlands. And, that's kind of tongue tripping, but uh, we appreciate the sentiment. But we came up with our own name, and uh, are you ready to announce it? I am. It is Loblolly Ridge. Now, what the heck kind of a name is that? I know a lot of you are wondering. Well, the Loblolly is the name of the pine tree that uh, surrounds our uh, So you can see it all around the background on us. And uh, this is a ridge. It's kind of the woodlands is on a mountaintop. It's surrounded by lush forests. There's hardwoods down in what are called the hollows, the hollers, as they say here. And on the ridges, loblolly pines. And there are lots of loblolly pines. That's kind of a tongue twister, too. At least it is for me. I'll get used to saying it. I though. keep saying lollipop pine, but it's loblolly. <laughs> well, it lollipop. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, there are lots of pines, and the property that we bought was totally pines. Yeah, this is on a ridge, and uh, all along us are the hollers where some hardwoods grow, and, and it's, it's beautiful. I mean, this whole woodlands development is uh, really thousands of acres of uh, beautiful spots uh, on this uh, little mountaintop near Linden, Tennessee. And so in honor of these great pine trees, they should hear the wind blowing through well, them. Well, that the is my breeze. favorite. When the wind blows and you hear that soft rustling of the pine needles, that's yeah. my favorite time. And then there is just this clean pine smell to the mm -hmm. air. So, let's put up our sign. Loblolly. And uh, we welcome you to explore with us now Loblolly Ridge, our property at the Woodlands. So the sign is up and you might wonder what's the purple band around the tree? Well, the purple band is kind of the universal signal for private property. 
We think it's a lot nicer than private, keep out, no trespassing. This just means it's private property and uh, looks a lot better, I think, than uh, nailing keep out signs. I hope you enjoyed your tour of what's now known as Loblolly Ridge. We sure enjoy it here. It's a little slice of paradise, the woods for us, and we're meeting some great people, and we're having fun. That's the important thing. We're having fun, and we're relaxing. This really is, uh, as we said, a dream come true for us. Uh, what's this? <laughs> is this an earthquake? Should I be alarmed? Our new Arcadia fifth wheel has really been a dream come true for us. We haven't had any problems with it at all. But that doesn't mean there aren't a couple of customizations that we can't add. So, let's show them. All right. The first problem we needed to address was getting in the door. This is the better way. It's a door lash extender from Moride. Now, all you have to do is reach, open the door, and you're ready to walk right in. We have four steps to get in, and the fifth wheel came with a handrail, but we wanted something just a little bit longer, and more ride makes this. So I have a nice handrail to get in. Reach, open, handrail, the entire four steps. We added a lock that has a code. It's very easy to work. Punch it in, and you're good. We have had the RV keyless lock on our Class C's and we enjoy this feature. We have a fob in case you want to open it remotely, lock it remotely. If you want to use a key, you have the key. Another issue that we wanted to solve dealt with stabilization, making it less shaky inside. So one of the challenges for RVers when they're at the campsite is they want to enjoy the RV as much as possible and sometimes on a windy day or Sometimes you get this situation where you're just walking inside the unit and you feel everything. Some people say it's like my washer is stuck on the spin cycle. They just feel every little bit of movement. One of the challenges is the amount of overhang. This unit is really good. It only has about seven feet of overhang from the rear jack to the very end of the unit. Some units have anywhere from 10 to 12 feet. The longer the overhang, the bigger the lever, and that just creates more and more instability. So what Moride's gonna do is try and reduce that lever with what we call our X-Brace hitch stabilizer. So, so I'm pushing on it and you can just see the amount of movement. Just imagine that's from wind or people walking around or the big dog who's running back and forth. And you just feel it inside the unit, both in the back and in the front. What's this? Okay. <laughs> Is this an earthquake? Should I be alarmed? So now we've tightened it up and now we're just going to come over and we're going to push on the unit again. Here's the test. Look at that. Holy cow. So we can't make all the movement go away, but we can greatly, greatly reduce it. Now it's time to do the same thing on the front with the fifth wheel X-Brace stabilizer. So we're gonna do a little before and after demonstration to show what the X-Brace product does. So you can see with yeah. one hand, just how much the RV moves. Yeah, wow. I'm basically attaching those tubes together using this pin. So you line up the holes with the inner and the outer tube, push the pin through, secure that in place. So now we're gonna do the after test we saw before with all the motion from side to side. Now we're gonna push on and see if it moves at all. It's not going anywhere. I got it. And there you have it, just that easy. The nice thing about the X-Brace is it stays permanently attached. All you have to do is remove those two pins loosen some of the pressure and then drive off you're good to go we love this x bar stabilizer i can't believe the difference it makes having that to keep everything nice and secure we also added this tripod for the hitch pin just to help a little bit more one of the things i love about this arcadia fifth wheel is the pass-through storage it is immense this goes all the way through the other side and i can put so much stuff in here However, the problem I have had with it is when I had stuff way in the back, I'd have to climb in just about 
I could make that a second bedroom if it's so big. Well, Moride makes this awesome sliding tray. Look at this. Is that cool or what? So now I can get everything. You know, this is all my gadgets. This is my Starlink dish. And I've got uh, all my uh, boxes and all the storage in here. And what's nice about it is I can do it from this side or on the other side, it will also come out that way. We couldn't be happier with our Arcadia and the little things that we've added make us like it even more. And I'm sure there'll be other things down the road that we'll probably feel compelled to buy. <laughs> hey, that's half the fun of RV, making it your own. Hello, everybody. We're Mike and Jennifer Wendelin, and this is the Hershey, America's largest RV show. And it's good to be here. It's super good to be here. I think we've been coming to the show for about 10 years now, and it just keeps getting better, it keeps getting bigger, and we love this show. Um, watch out for this guy. Video. Well, thank you guys. <laughs> You're my best friend I've never met. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a pleasure to meet you. You guys, I really enjoy your videos and your travels, and I look forward to copying a lot of the travels that you've um, you've been on. How many RVs have you had, Judy? Fourteen. Fourteen. What have you had? Oh, uh, we've had truck campers. We've had pull behinds. We've had fifth wheels. We even converted a uh, ambulance into a motor or uh, camper. Really? We've had let's see overlanding. In fact, my husband is in the middle of over doing an overlanding right now. Truck thing. Oh. Engineers have to have fun. Oh yeah, yeah. everybody has to have fun. <laughs> so, what are you looking at at the show? I we're just looking with them, with our friends. Are you trying to talk them to get something, right? Uh, well, Is he going to have to work to hard to talk you guys into something? Uh, we're, we're trying to decide what we want. Well, what are you looking at? Uh, what, what kind of things do you want? Probably Class C. Class C. Yeah. Well, Dean, we haven't seen each other, I don't think, since before COVID. I was going to say, in person, you're absolutely correct. Yeah. Did a couple, you know, we did some FaceTimes yeah. together and we did some uh, meeting it's, Zooms. It, it is great to see It you. is great. So I'm looking at some of the trends I'm seeing. Yes. And I'm wondering if you have seen also that. Uh, there's a lot of people who got into RVing, Class B's, the van-like movement, yes. that are kind of like now moving up, like yeah. they're going up to something a little bit larger, yeah. not too big, but still larger. Have you guys seen that? I, I, I totally agree with you. I think if COVID did one thing, it sure made, brought people into the RV industry, and a lot of them you know, were newbies and they started off, well, we're just a van, is, you know, we'll just go with our van. Then they realized, well, this is fun. But the van can only take me little places because I can't take nothing with me. I can't take my clubs, you know, I can't take my kayaks, I can't take, you know, stuff, mountain gear, things like that. So then they're like, but we still love this lifestyle. Is there something that's one size bigger? And that's where the wonder comes into play and the unity, but the wonder on the Ford Transit chassis. This is our brand new baby. What is this? We had a wonder, we didn't have this. Yes, this is brand new. This is an optional outside TV with <laughs> a sound bar. Woo! Absolutely fantastic. We've had a lot of requests, you know, tailgating parties, things oh, like yeah. that. We talked about a couple of other little things that we've got a uh, nice option there with the uh, lithium batteries. So we go 100 amp, 100 amps, and 200 amps of lithium. And you know, storage is always a big deal. So we got some storage in this side here. And then over on this side is where we have some really big storage. You're gonna absolutely love this. This is absolutely fantastic. Look at the size of that storage bin. Golf that clubs, chairs, yes. tents, <laughs> portable kayaks, uh, you name it, mountain gear, wow, whatever you like nice. to do, you know. Yeah. I love and it. then we have our optional outside table for our, you know, our uh, people that do a lot of dry camping. You got your own table. Wow, this is nice. Wow is right. No kidding. This is big. It just feels huge. I mean, there's three people in here. And, you know, going back to the van thing, and vans are great. They're small and they're fun. Don't get me wrong, but three people in here. Do you feel claustrophobic at all? We could have five or six people in here, no problem. I mean, it just feels so big. The slide out creates lots of living 
space. And I'm in the back and it really feels huge. It's only a couple feet bigger than most Class B vans. Isn't it crazy? Look at this shower. Yep. Look at this gorgeous shower. And we're gonna, there's two locks here, see there, and a lock here. And then we're just gonna bring this down. It's pretty simple. Like it's not pretty simple, it's very simple. Look how quick that was. And look, you can see here, 68 inches, 76 inches long. I mean, I'm six foot one, six two. Look at this. This is a ton of room. And of course, look at this. You're gonna love this. Another pop-up TV that is standard. Wow. Very nice. You see that? That is our brand new Leisure Travel Van Unity FX 2023. And it's going home with us this, Sunday night. This Sunday. Uh, Want to get a quick sneak peek? Come on in. Wow, feels so spacious. The light colors, I like the light colors. I like the wood color. Nice mirror, <laughs> yeah, you get to say hi, Mike. Wow, You Everything notice the beautiful. colors, we, this is the uh, first time we've tried this color. This is white. I think there's a better name for it. I think it's, is it dove? Dove white, I think. But look at this new flooring, but show everybody that. This is new on the Sprinter, uh, this cutaway chassis. You used to have to step There used up to be a step. Because that the cab part here was down lower. Oh, this is nice. And Not now nice step down. it's all on one level. Mm-hmm. Very nice. So that nice. is really nice. So when you sat, you ended up being like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now it's So here. now you're not doing that. Yeah. It's much more comfortable. Well, I just love it, and uh, and the the lights are different too. Look yes, at all those beautiful different. LED lights. They're like mood lights. You can control them. Ooh, -hoo, we could have mood lights. Mood lights. This is just so nice. Why we have uh, ordered the the FX again is this is, and we'll show you this in other videos, but this is set up as two lounge chairs. It will work as a table, a kitchen table with two opposing seats. And of course, this all comes down as a Murphy bed. And that is really exciting. So that's kind of the front area, but there is also a rear area. And, and that's uh, this rear lounge. As we're walking back here, the first thing that caught my eye was the uh, paper towel roll. That's nice to have it permanent and I don't have to add one. Good idea. Shall I look underneath, see what we got? We've got some room here. Probably put a trash can under there. And let's look at these drawers. One, two, three. Ooh, and our little secret compartment. Secret things. Got some room. Those are all soft touch. Mm -hmm. And a wardrobe. There's another wardrobe up front. And there's a table there. If you wanted to bring out that table, you can bring that out. So again, storage. This is like my favorite storage down here. And then the drawers. I like the gray interior. And we should show, this is that Dometic refrigerator. You can open, open it. Open it about midway. You can open it that side. And if you're working down here, and then if you're over on this side, you want to open it, you can open it that way. And it's that way with the refri the freezer and the refrigerator part. Um, Ooh, can't forget the pantry. This Tell is a oh, great a new pantry. Lock on it. Wow, this looks durable. This is very, very sturdy. Good. Wow, we can get a lot in there. That Hi there. <laughs> this is kind of like a, a homecoming for us. Secret. Oh yeah, a little nice secret little thing. Spot. And there's also plugs in there, so I could like put my router in here. Or, that's all great. Back here is the rear lounge, and uh, I really like that. For one thing, I can actually take a little nap here, scooch down a little bit, put a pillow back there, and this is like a day bed. Or I can just snooze and do some deep contemplation with my eyes closed. Uh, but for work, you see this thing? This will actually slide out. Let me show you this. I love this feature, and I really missed it in our other RV. So this is a desk, a computer desk. Lift this up. All I need is my computer. <laughs> uh, and it's also, by the way, there's a, there's a 
cushion in there. There's a cushion in here. In you case you need it, like an ottoman. Ottom. Yeah. So this is um, really a nice area back here just to relax, do some work. And um, in the meantime, somebody else can be working up front. Okay, I'll lift these up. One, two, three. And they, this isn't hollow, like a lot of manufacturers do. They're definite three different compartments. And then down here. Lots of room. Let's show them how nice this bathroom is. It is uh, really a nice big stand-up shower. Great head on this thing. Uh, very comfortable uh, head. Uh, easy adjust with the water. A nice uh, nice door. Room, full mirror. Up here, uh, a little medicine cabinet. So that's just a quick sneak peek of the interior. There's a storage outside we'll show you. People want to know about uh, power. We have a 3600 watt generator, which is just nice to have. It runs on propane, uh, but we have 400 watts of solar panels and we have uh, 200 amp hours of lithium batteries. So uh, we can do some boot docking that uh, two 100 amp hour uh, batteries with a 2000 watt inverter is enough for us to even use the uh, inverter and uh, for the microwave when, uh, when we're stopped so we don't have to turn the generator on. All good. All good. Uh, lots of room. This is a little class C, but it is so nice. Very roomy. Nice. Very, Very spacious. Roomy. And, and these uh, two sofas, you have so much room to have people stop by, entertain guests, family. Lots yep. of room. Lots of room. Just now when I saw you, oh my God, it's them. Oh. <laughs> it's us. It's us. <laughs> it is you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I yes. really can't even tell you how much it meant to us to get through the pandemic and have you guys always get there. Yeah. And just really? educating. Yeah. Oh my gosh. No, it really that is it was so a touching. long time. Constant we had the education fireplace, of all the TV, this great. and Mike and Jen. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. And I even, I even once like was like bugging you like, how are you so good at this? I remember asking yes. in one of the chats and you were right there like, oh. what was your background? How did you do this? Oh. Thank you. Oh, it's I a hope. joy. And That's where good. are you from? Connecticut. Connecticut. Yeah. Oh, I asked you a question once. Our concern was in Connecticut, it's very hard to find class B. We're in a Winnebago Travato right now. Very hard to find class B dealers. And I asked you, what do we do? Where do we go? And you told us, Fred's RV. I Fred's remember RV. clearly yeah. Fred's yep. RV. So this is our first show, and this is the first place we came. <laughs> what are you looking right for? Here. Well, we're we love our Winnebago Travado, yeah. but the LTV the rear twin bed Wonder is the thing that makes my heart you, pound you the most. Had we just these. sold it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. Did you go but, to see this wheel? one? Did this we? is this is our new one. Is this is. Yours? We're driving it home Sunday. No you are. Way. Congratulations! Yeah. But yes, we do have a fifth. That's what I was wondering. You, I didn't know if you they switched over. Oh, <laughs> we used it. I saw him and almost started crying. <laughs> so that's a preview of some of the things that we saw that uh, caught our eye at the show this year, and uh, all the awesome people that we met. It was. Uh, I think I enjoy that even more than seeing these cool RVs. We always meet the greatest people and the enthusiasm and the excitement that people have as they look around and dream and try to plan what they're going to get next so they can live out their adventures. Okay, Mike and Jen and Bo, are you guys ready to see your refresh on your new interior? We sure are. We can't wait. A little wait. outfit. We can't wait. We asked Courtney to look at our 32-foot Arcadia fifth wheel and help us make a workspace that would help us edit and write in a comfy place. What do you think, buddy? like that? And as it turned out, there were a few more special touches from the Flippin' Nomad. Oh, I love it. I'm so happy. I have a medicine cabinet. Perfect. Welcome to our home. Oh, you like I it? Love it? I sure do. Oh, I was a little nervous, cow. but it's wonderful. Isn't it great? Well, it really is. It's it's going to be great for you guys to work too. But there's a lot of other little pieces that are built into it. Um, I think my favorite piece back here is probably this cable management channel back here. It was part of the desk, um, but then we used it to um, 
mount the desk to the wall and then we also gave you this uh, power bar extension here where we ran the cord through the hole and then up and under this ledge to try to conceal it as much as possible and then plugged it into the outlet that was already here so that way you can still have power to the desk without having to run all of your cords over to here. What's really neat about this is we can also use this as our kitchen table, dining table. Absolutely, double purpose. Look at these chairs. We have real chairs, real office chairs. Ooh, nice and comfortable. And I wanted to go with this uh, type of fabric because figure, you know, I assume that you guys would be probably eating at this table too in case you spill something. They're a nice vinyl, really easy to wipe up. They won't stain and they're super comfortable too so they are the perfect chairs for this application and we have desk drawers two of them yep two that. desk drawers and we add you know because it's an rv and it's traveling you have to have travel latches so we installed travel latches for you guys there too so they won't come flying open on travel days per your request um you wanted somewhere to store your shoes and so it just seemed like a logical place to sneak in a bench as well so uh, this drawer you just push it and it slides open so if bo's got you know his leashes, his leashes or poop bags can go in there some you know gloves you can never have too much storage in an rv makes it really look comfy new pillows another throw in a basket yeah so we gave you some just simple pillows um nearly all of these pillows except for this little one all came from ikea um so if somebody wanted to recreate this look at home very simple to do and we've got our throws to keep them uh -huh. warm Yep, and so I went with um, this knit one just because, you know, it's a nice medium weight blanket, but it also adds some nice texture to the room and then green. I mean, you can't go wrong with a cream and this beautiful brown leather chair and a green. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is an even lighter weight one, but I love the little tassels on oh, it. Oh, yeah. Adds a little something something to the space. I really, really like it. And then to top it off, like I said, we, we gave Bo a special little place. Come here, buddy. Come, come see your new rug. Come here. Come here. Yeah. Soft little spot for Bo to lay oh down. Oh, yeah. It's perfect. Oh, what do you think, buddy? You yeah. like that? Oh, I love it. I'm so happy. I have a medicine cabinet. And the hardware, it matches everything that we have. I've got lots of room in here to put everything that we need. I can set it up there. I love it. New hardware matches everything else. Perfect. And But wait, there's more. There's more. These look permanent. They're not going to fall off. And, Perfect. We don't have to worry about them coming I mean, down. command strips are kind of nice, like no, those guys. No, not really. <laughs> but that's so much nicer. That's much, much nicer. Courtney, this is amazing. Oh, thank you. You, you, did, you knocked it out of the park. And this. Now I'm really upset I didn't make my list longer. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we'll go round two. <laughs> you know, it's amazing how just a couple of changes, maybe some different colors, can make something so much more comfortable and fun. Yeah, it could be a ton of work or maybe just a few things, but doing those things make it better for you to work and live in and uh, just make it so much more beautiful. Yeah, uh, it uh, enhances the RV lifestyle. We want to thank Courtney Armstrong for spending the time with her mom, Patty, to make our RV uh, ours. Now he, just went off the boundary and look I just got a notice on my Apple watch notification oh we really want to keep track of Bo but we don't want him running all the way out there and that is in contact with satellites and you use an app on your phone, you can draw a fence. And you can look at this bike set up a fence line for Bo with the county road up at the top. And it will even track him, showing me where he is. We love camping and having Bo with us. We enjoy his companionship and he loves to run off leash and we like being having him be off leash. But sometimes you're in places where there are just dangers out there, things that could hurt him. So we love what we have found now, a virtual fence that uses satellites to keep him in a certain area. This is an expensive gadget. 
but not really when you stop and think what it will do. We have thought, for example, here on our Tennessee property where we have five acres and there's hollers and swamps and woods and sometimes snakes back there and there's coyotes and we really want to keep track of bow, but we don't want to run all the way out there. Uh, if we had put invisible fence in, you know, the wired stuff, it would be, it would be a fortune. Same thing with our Michigan property. How do we keep track of bow? Well, that's where this, I'll say right off the beginning, right at the beginning, $1,500. That's what this costs. This is called the spot on collar. It's the spot on fence collar. Now, this is a satellite device. This thing right here uh, will always be facing up and that is in contact with satellites. And you use an app on your phone you can draw a fence. This is all done with an app, the Spot On app. And you can look at this. Mike set up a fence line for Bo with the county road up at the top. And you can watch how he set this up. So, uh, you set the app and you hit start, hold this up to the sky, and start walking. Okay, I have the fence property set. Stay here. Now, I know we're going to put this on you. Here we go. We're going to put this on so that you can have freedom and run around and have a really good time. Let's go see if we can make this thing go off. Boundaries over here. Now, he just went off the boundary and look I just got a notice on my Apple watch notification the boundary is about oh maybe 10 feet further from where he is but did you see how he stopped he stopped he's not going further in there that is awesome so when Bo gets right on the boundary like that it sends that alert and you can see it on the app right where he is but he did not go any further. If he does break out of the fence line that we've set, I get an immediate alert on my smartphone and it will even track him, showing me where he is. Now, uh, the battery lasts pretty much all day. We can put it on him in the morning and let him out and uh, then we just charge it at night. It uh, doesn't take long to charge. Bo, you wanna go? Let's go. Let's go have some fun. Here we go. Bo is a free dog. <laughs> now, did you see how he turned right around there? <laughs> he knows that if he goes any further than that, he's going to get a warning signal on the collar. Good boy. Come on, Bo. Now I keep them out of some of the the real thick stuff down in the hollers there at the back and the sides, but he's got uh, several acres that he can he can be at and explore and sniff and stake out as his domain. Um, the boundary that you set up is pretty accurate. Uh, it starts to sound when he gets within about 10 feet of the boundary. We have found really that the tone is all he needs. You've got to work with him. we got to do a little training. We spent maybe 15 minutes a day for a couple of days and he caught the hang of it right away. You can give him a, a little static shock if that's what you want to do, but we've opted not to do that. It's working just fine. He doesn't need that. Hey, we're Mike and Jennifer Wendland. If you want more information on this, check the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy trails. You bring out the best in me by your side. I'll forever be with a great big smile as big as the big blue ocean tide. La 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 la. If you call, I'll be right up. If you fall. Thank you.
Hi everybody, Mike and Jen here, and today we are gonna put some air skirts underneath our fifth wheel. And the purpose is, is uh, we want to uh, insulate that area underneath the RV to keep the cold and the wind from going under there to kind of create a little air warmer, air barrier. It'll make the floor warmer and just make everything more efficient. So we're gonna give you some tips on how to do that. And the first tip is, don't do it on a snowy day. Do it before it snows. Yes, preferably when it's like 60 or 70 degrees instead of snowing in 32 degrees. But it is what it is, and we're gonna show you how it is. Wheel, taking away this little pocket of warm air that we're trying to form here. I think I've got this wrapped around here pretty well now. Over, around. Don't want that wind to get under there. Our air lifts came with four eight foot ones and two six foot ones. The six foot for the front and the eight foot for the side. So two eight feet on each side. So we're gonna partially inflate this. All right, now we're gonna work it into position and finish filling it up. You ready, Mike? I'm ready. All right. Right now, I've got the best part of this Yeah, job. you got the easy part of the It's about job. time I got the easy part of something. We roughly have the first of these eight foot sections in position, and they give you a, a high speed pump. And we're gonna, gonna actually inflate this a little bit, and then we'll make sure we get it where we want. Pump just snaps in, and then, Okay, it's kind of soft to the touch, but you can see it's it's solid in there. Now one thing that's interesting, you see that's our sewer outtake, so I can still empty, but did you see how that molds right around it? That's your end. This, by the way, is military grade. It is really tough. It molds around uh, anything uh, that is in its way, like you saw with the sewer pipe there. And uh, it also uh, is very hard to puncture, but if there are sharp things under there, they give you some little tabs and some things that you can insulate the sharp stuff with. But we, uh, we've gone through ours and it's, it's pretty good. That's because this is a slide and I wanted to get to it, I'm gonna let the slide out now and then we'll finish inflating it after we put the slide back out. Okay, the uh, air skirts are in. We're told it will make the floor noticeably warmer and um, help the furnace not work so hard. Well, that's a good plan. That's a good thing to have. But about an hour and a half to, they say a half hour to put it together, but. Uh, we both are a little challenged in doing things like that and the cold weather did not help. Cold weather and um, well, the air skirts will kind of mold around like your uh, levelers and things like that. You really want to place them, uh, we found, behind them. Placing them was a challenge. And of course, every time we, uh, we, we knelt down on the wet ground, <laughs> the snow got us wet. <laughs> Check it out yourself and uh, see what, uh, what you think. We'll let you know how it works with us. But right now, we're glad we got them. We are. I know you're wondering, how did we find this property? We've been looking for years for a large hunk of property, scouring the state. And uh, for all of you out there trying to do it, it's really hard. It is gone. As soon as that property is out there, it's snatched up immediately. So how did we find this? Walking the dogs. We were at our son and daughter-in-law's house and we took the dogs for a walk and our daughter-in-law said, this is where you need to live. 
We thought it was beautiful. We had 10 acres, a lake, and as a bonus, there was a house. And we knew immediately this is where we needed to be. So the first thing we did is put in some electrical hookups for RVs. This is a 50 amp, which we have hooked up now to our uh, fifth wheel. And this is a 30 amp supply. And uh, we ran a 100 amp uh, dedicated panel out here so we can uh, put a couple of RVs, either our own or friends or neighbors. But uh, having that power, particularly in the winter time like this, is awesome. This is being recorded close to Thanksgiving. And you can tell that we are in Southwest Michigan and part of that lake effect snow area. So we are going to have a lot of snow. We know that. Bo's gonna be so happy. Now we've got this spot here that looks like it used to be a garden. So I want it to be a garden again. Not that we're gonna homestead or anything, but I think we all as much as possible wanna raise our own zucchinis and cucumbers and squash and tomatoes and who knows? I better not plant corn or else I'm gonna have a lot of deer here. I already got them all ready, but uh, it's gonna be fun. So you can see one of the things that we have here is a lake. And we're pretty excited about it. Uh, you can't see it now, but there's a flock of about, oh, 12, 14 uh, wild ducks out there, mallards. Uh, it's, uh, a, it's not a huge lake, but it's pretty nice though. There's a big great, great uh, blue heron flying across. Uh, we own about half of that lake. Uh, before the weather got cold, we put in these steps that uh, will go down to the lake. Um, we'll have, we've got a little path that'll cut out and we'll go out. Um, there are bass in the lake and bluegill and I'm looking forward to kind of getting to know that lake a little bit and doing some fishing with my grandkids. We uh, have a dock here that uh, is all waiting for spring and uh, we'll put this, uh, this dock in uh, as soon as the weather warms up and the lake doesn't freeze. But uh, having a lake on our 10 acres, a lake that we own at least half of if not more, that's pretty cool. This lake is a spring-fed lake, and we've been told there are at least two springs that feed it. So it's going to be such fun to watch it during these different seasons as it changes. And we're looking forward to winter when it freezes, and you can do ice skating and have a nice fire and chocolate, hot chocolate. It, it just all sounds good. And our grandkids come over and enjoy this, and we get to enjoy watching them. I know when I was young, one of my favorite things was ice skating. So I'm looking forward to, who knows, I might even put on some ice skates and take it up again. Huh. Don't look at me. Not me. <laughs> hey, get, oh, don't dig a hole there. in the yard. <laughs> look what he did while we were talking. Dog likes to dig. <laughs> Goodness. Lots of limbs. Lots of places to rest your A big draw for us with this property is this barn that came with it. It's a big, nice, spacious barn, and we can use it with our various RV projects and products. We can take it in there, figure things out, have space to spread out, and work. We're looking at this as a long-term project. 
It's going to be our RV retreat with that 10 acres and the pond and the trees and the woods. And it's going to be our, our home someday. But what we really like about this place is how much open space and nature we're surrounded by. Uh, as Jennifer already mentioned, there's a lot of deer. Oh, the deer are just running all over the place. Yeah, Bo uh, is having a ball chasing the deer. <laughs> uh, we have a little nature trail that uh, walks around the lake. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, we'll walk it and show you a little bit about it. And what's kind of fun is the previous owners had a chicken coop. They raised chickens here. Now, we're not going to do that because we're not home enough. But uh, someday, if we ever wanted to stay home, we could raise some chickens. Or maybe we'll get the grandkids to take care of the chickens <laughs> when they're not home. I don't know. Now, the house and the uh, property had been, uh, I don't say necessarily neglected, but uh, the previous pre 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 the previous owners were uh, the original owners and uh, both passed away and uh, it was uh, a pretty good buy for us. Uh, it was bought and sold at auction and uh, we just were really attracted by the 10 acres and the more we thought about that the more we uh, enjoyed that idea of maybe taking that house and making it our uh, our full-time house, our, our six and Burke's house. Now we're not going to quit RVing or anything, but uh, now we have a place where both of our RVs can be in one spot. We can work on them. Yeah, we don't have to store our fifth wheel someplace. Yeah. It's with us. And we get to explore and walk this beautiful land and kind of be surrounded by nature. And I guess the biggest plus of all, <laughs> the grandkids. Not far away. Short just, walk. Just a short walk. Uh, maybe uh, 300 yards and partially through a cornfield and <laughs> we're at their backyard. <laughs> so, so where are we? We're in Southwest Michigan, not too far from Lake Michigan and uh, west of Kalamazoo, that general area, there's a wine growing area, um, but it's great. And Bo of course has that satellite dog collar on so he can run wild and free. Yeah, lots of vineyards here. Great plants all over the place, and it's very pretty. The rolling hills with the great plants. You can have your chickens. I'd rather grow some wine, some <laughs> some uh, some, some grapes, grapes, and make some wine. Yeah, we had a couple <laughs> grape plants our present house, and the only things that got the grapes were the raccoons. The raccoons loved it. Yep. Yeah. Well, this is it. I don't know what you all think of it, but uh, this is our land. We hope you uh, you like it. We'll give you some follow-ups as we uh, continue to develop it. Between this and our property in Tennessee, we have uh, two RV retreats, and uh, this is like uh, Nirvana for us uh, RVers. Uh, we're Mike and Jennifer. Give us a thumbs up on this video if you can, and don't forget to subscribe to the RV Lifestyle channel right here on YouTube. If they hit that bell icon, you can uh, be subscribed and you'll get notified when we have new videos online. So, happy trails.